Good evening and welcome to Hamish's Nerd Network. I keep wanting to say Hamish's News Network. That's that's probably because I stole the name from, well, you know where I stole it from, at least the initials. Uh, tonight we're talking about all sorts of things. I am Hamish the Polar Bear. I'm here tonight with uh, Leah Smith, Leah Marie Smith. Hello, Leah. Hello. Uh, Aaron Smith, no relation. Hi, everybody. Uh, John Hall, hello. Hello, John. John? <laughs> Hello, John? Have you muted Sorry. yourself, John? Yes, okay, John. Hi, John. I pressed the wrong button. That's okay, it happens, it's, it's fine, everything's going to, everything's going fine, I'm sure. <laughs> Nothing's on fire. Nothing's on fire yet. Okay, John, hi, uh, so that's John as well. And Chris, hello, Chris. Hello. Yeah, and welcome to everybody who was was out there in, uh, I was going to say radio land, but it's kind of video and radio, isn't it? It's all, it's all, it's all a big... Uh, it's all a big trick. Um, we are uh, going to be talking tonight about uh, several different things. We've got Doctor Who, Big Finish Audio. And obviously we weren't going to talk about Doctor Who anymore, but of course we end the show with a Doctor Who uh, cover type thing. <laughs> and we talk about Doctor Who every week. So, you know, we've just got to keep that going. Um, eventually it will be, it's, it is on holiday sort of thing. So hopefully we'll stop st- t- talking about it for, for at least a month or so in between. <laughs> Never, never. Um, so we'll be talking about Doctor Who Big Finish, that'll be uh, in a few minutes' time, uh, or uh, just a couple of minutes, and uh, we will also be talking about a TV show called Preacher. Uh, Leah will be taking us on a quick rundown of, the, let's see if I can get this right without screwing up, the Young Adult, no, yeah, Young Adult Literature Convention? Did I get yeah. That right? I said it properly. Yeah. Yalk, yep, yeah, okay, that, yeah, fair enough. People people would be like me not knowing what Yalk was. Uh, we're also going to be talking about a TV show called Handmaid's Tale, which is very disturbing from what I've seen about it so far. I've not seen it yet. And a uh, bit about Marvel's Death's Head, because it's an anniversary of Marvel's Death Head. And then a few films, that, uh, a few of the guys uh, and gals, and, and, and it's, what the hell am I talking about? A few of the peeps have seen this week, uh, or the last couple of weeks. And we will do our big discussion at the end, will be about uh, the same as it's been for uh, the last show, it'll be Game of Thrones again. Uh, in fact, no, I think we just did a short thing last week. Anyway, it'll be Game of Thrones will be the big thing for a few weeks while it's uh, while it's all on, and uh, I'll be babbling more and more there. Right, I've already made us go over time, so let's carry on. <laughs> and I'm going to try and get the right thing, because John wants a very complex slideshow, because he's like that. Uh, so I'm going <laughs> to hand you over now to John to talk about the Big Finish audio, Doctor Who Big Finish audio. Take it away, John. Yes, I got the new... Um classic doctors new monsters volume two because i really enjoyed the first one and also i got some overtime money um and there's uh, if you don't know about them before there they are audio adventures as um four stories and they're 50 minutes a piece and the it's classic doctors new monsters and so they are companion lights so there's no companions in them and uh, it's sort of a way to tie together um, classic Doctor Who and New Who even more. Um, so the the four stories are uh, Night of the Vashta Narada by uh, John Dorney, uh, featuring uh, Tom Baker, Pam Ferris, Loretti King, Emma Lowndes and Matt DeWitt. Um, this story was, uh, it says on the back, I'll read the back of everyone if you like. A phone world was set to be the happiest place in the galaxy, Uh, A planet of joy, of euphoria, of laughter and delight, except construction was marred by the reports of a predator. And then a few days before opening, all communication ceased. Owner Georgia Donnelly is desperate to open the resort and has hired Amanda Steele's crew to find out what happened on the planet. They're the best, but even they might not be up to the task. Joined by the doctor and picking them off one by one, they slowly start to realise that something terrifying lurks in the shadows. So that's Night of the Vashta Narada, featuring Tom Baker. The next one is Empire of the Ragnos by Scott Hancock. And uh, when a distress call rips the TARDIS from the vortex, dragging it back through time, it arrives in the midst of a conflict between Gallifrey and an ancient foe. The Doctor as ever wants to help, but in returning a wounded combatant home, he becomes further and further entangled in a web of deceit and recrimination. A web spun by an eight-legged empress and her minions. The Empire of the Rachnos is at war, and wherever he stands, the Doctor is on the wrong side. Peter Davison, Ajoa Ando, who was Martha's mum um, in the, the Martha series, 
uh, Nigel Planer, Andrew French, and Lisa Kay. Uh, the next one is The Carrier Knight's Curse by Simon Gurrier. Uh, Katie Bell returns to her Midlands home to find a strange goings on at Busker's Fair, a witch trial in the 1980s, a bonfire ready to be ready to be lit. Luckily, a colourful visitor is already investigating, and the local vicar, Katie's dad, is versed in tales of the macabre. Terrifying forces are on the loose, and the town holds up a secret. There is black magic in the Black County, and the doctor has the name of his enemy on the tip of his tongue. Something wicked this way comes. Tom Baker, Maya Sondi, Andre Bernard, Adele Anderson, and Michael Fenton Stevens. And the fourth story is Day of the Vashta Narada by Matt Fitton. As the time war rages, Cardinal Alistra of Gallifrey seeks to create even more dangerous weapons to deploy against the enemy. When the Doctor stumbles across Synthesis Station, he discovers that the Time Wars have sponsored a project to weaponize already lethal creatures. But in doing so, Eva Morrison and her team have unwittingly used a colony of Vashta Narada with a very unfortunate history of humanoid contact. The Doctor finds himself leading a desperate race for survival in which the shadows may be the least of their worries. Paul McGann, Jacqueline Pierce, John Ravens, Hamish Patel, was a Hamish, and uh, Tim Wallers as well. So yes, um, great cast. And I would say um, the two that I like most are the Vashta Narada st- toy stories without a shadow of a doubt. <laughs> See what I did there? Mm. <laughs> Um, the other two, <laughs> the other two are uh, in first listen. I would say the Empire of the Ragnos, the Peter Davison one. Um, when I first listened to that, I was like, "Oh my god, this is like really pantomime and really um, not not nice." But after a couple more listens, it got better, and I could see there's actually quite a good story there, and the actually. The Ragnos are actually, you know more about their society and things like that, so they've expanded on them. And there's good sound design and good performances. It's just the, the pantomiminess of it. It's just like, oh, no. And to a certain extent, the Carrionite one was a bit like that as well. Um, but um, that was quite um, quite a good story as well in some ways, but um, still quite good. And um, it, it, that story was about how language uh, shapes reality, which is quite an interesting idea. And sure. yes, yeah, um, I, I recognise the Ragnos from the Christmas was it the Christmas special with Catherine Tate, um, and the right, Vashti yeah. from the library. What's the other monster? Yeah, the Carrionite. It's not I, one that I don't jumps out. That either, yeah. The the Carrionites when the Shakespeare Code. Ah, right. Okay. Oh, what like yeah. the the witches from Macbeth? The that's kind of, it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. The Shakespeare Code, which featured Dean Lennox, Lennox Kelly as William Shakespeare. Mm, he was and, good, I thought. Yeah, I like that story. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that the the two uh, Vashti Narada stories are the best ones. Um, the first one has a certain uh, because they're attacking a fun, they're going to a fun fair with the owner and stuff, and they're trying to to. Um, defeat them so they're attacking them rather than the other way around you know which was quite a nice idea and there's sort of a, a nightmare in silver in a good way vibe to it you know like a disused fun fair and creepiness and the, the last one um with paul mcgann is particularly cool because it's um it's cardinal Lystra, um who's uh, the head honcho of gallifrey um is basically um mutating the trying to mutate the Vashta Narada to use them to eat the Daleks basically and um obviously it's not going to work is it um so that was just a, a really nice story and like the they played with the concept of Vashta Narada a little bit which I really liked um one funny thing is uh you you can't really have the Vashta Narada on the box yeah, because they're invisible. No. <laughs> yeah, look, looking at the cover art for those two, there's there's not really much indication of the bad guys in that one. Yeah, you can just put a skull on there, and it's like, oh no, the skull. Um, and also, there was a character called Roxette, which I thought was particularly funny. 
I mean, I wonder if somebody was looking at their now albums whilst they were writing it, perhaps. <laughs> or maybe the uh, maybe they were big fans of. Uh, oh gosh, yeah, it don't feel good. Who did the yes, original song? Where say. they got the name from? Oh uh, right, yeah, yeah, good. So yeah, yeah, good shape. See, I'm um, some sort of nerd, yeah. aren't I? Yeah, yeah, that's good, mate. Um, so, so did yeah, you, the, did you, uh, are these like four separate things you can buy, or is it like one thing? Like, because is it like the four of them well, are the one ma- package sort of thing? It's all in one box at the moment, but I think the first box, I think it eventually went to you know being sold separately eventually. But I have to say, I don't think it's quite as good as the first one because the first one was just fantastic. Um, which had the Fallen Angels, the Jadoon, the Sycorax, and uh, the new Sontarans in it. Right, so that, um, that was still classic Doctors with the new monsters then? Yeah, Never which right, is, okay. I know what you're thinking, because the Sontarans aren't, uh, are not, or, you know, there's the new version of Sontarans. I think they cheated a bit there. But <laughs> yeah, that was but... that was the volume one. No, I wasn't but, sure um, if, if volume one was going to be like new Doctors, classic monsters or not. So that's what was a bit, that's what was just, just double checking. Well, I suppose the oh. new who kind of you know expanded on what the Santarans already were, so yeah. I suppose you're taking that new information and feeding it back into the yeah story wise it's still new stuff. yeah 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 but yeah all in all I, I I did enjoy it and I think the Vashta Narada were the were the stories that made it worth buying it was it was twenty three pounds for like the box which I, I it's not too bad is it. For, well, I mean, what, six six quid a, a, a story, so that's all right. Six quid an episode. Hmm. How long did you say? Yeah. Like Fifty minutes. So it's like the same length as a, roughly as a Doctor Who episode of the old school, that's or, right, or, yeah. or the new ones. Really, they're about an hour, fifty minutes in an hour, aren't they? Yeah, okay. and the, the, there's a disc of them. There's a making of disc as well that some people like. I quite like them, but uh, some people don't bother with them. But you know, but, um, yeah, I thought it was. Um, yeah, I, the, the original um, classic Doctors had, yeah, it, the the Fallen Angels one with Peter Davidson was just superb in the original one because uh, that included um, Diane Morgan. All right, she's great. And right, um, yeah, and Matthew Kelly as well. Do you remember him? I know him. Um, the the singing show. Yeah. Stars yeah. And yeah. Stars. That's the one. Stars in their eyes. Okay, before we get dragged out the stars in their eyes, I'm going to wrap <laughs> this. I know where the, I know what this group are like, so I'm going to move this on. Don't uh, forget Mad About. He used to be he used to present oh, Mad see, About. See, see, oh, you just no. give them an inch, right? Um, so that's the Big Finish Doctor Who. Uh, it's the latest the latest uh, set from from the Big Finish. They make a lot of really good audio uh, versions of Doctor Who stuff. I mean, they basically kept you know they were they were more or less the thing that kept Doctor Who alive in between the uh, the, the the series being off air because it was. Uh, They've been going for a long time, haven't they, John? Yeah, yeah, I, I would say so. And the um, some of the comic stories have been adapted as well, haven't they? Um, That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, anyway, and I, I also, I also oh. like the um, the new David Tennant audio, which I was like last year. But there's another one with Billy Piper coming out soon. So, so basically, all the doctors looks- keep making stuff, but in the audio format. Yeah, I suppose that's good because yeah. then you know the, their voice doesn't change as much as their appearance over time. So you know you can still imagine yeah. them as they are. Anyway, right before anybody else thinks about anything else they want to say, silly, I'm going to change this over. Thanks very much for that, John. Uh, next up, I'm going yeah. to hand this over to Aaron and Chris, and they are going to talk about preacher. Um, I believe Aaron can probably lead on this a bit more than I can. So take okay. it away, and I shall follow. Thanks. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the caveat with this is obviously we're talking about Preacher of the TV series because uh, yeah. Chris and I, and unusually for me, I haven't read the comic first, um, which in some ways is good because most things where I've read the comic first, I yeah. end up getting very, very angry. Um, and yeah, I, 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 sorry. Ah, go, go. I, I had no knowledge of this um, being a comic thing or anything until it appeared on um on amazon uh till the first series appeared on amazon um last year and it was uh yeah i yeah so that i just kind of looked at it um because it looked like a cool tv show yeah i was aware of the comic but it's one of those ones that's been in my kind of list of things i should probably read at some point Mm. for a long time it's a great loved um series 
uh, originally created by um, Steve, the, the sadly now departed Steve Dillon and uh, oh, Gar- Garth Ennis, that's the one, um, mm. who say, writes, has written some of my favorite stuff as well. His DC series Hitman was brilliant. Um, but yeah, they, they created it for DC Comics' mature readers line, Vertigo. Um, right. And you can tell from the TV series why it was in the the uh, mature readers. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. it's very very much not for children. Um, it's grotesquely violent to the point of slapstick, but at the same time never being <laughs> never being so slapstick that you could that it doesn't hit you. Um, yeah, the, yeah. It's the, the, the indeed. Um, so the, the series centers around m- mostly three characters. You have the t- t- uh, titular, titular uh, preacher, Jesse Custer, played by Dominic Cooper, um, mm. who two, two of these three characters, you, you, they could have stepped out of the comic book. It's, it's scary. Um, Dominic Cooper looks fantastically like the character and is really very, very good. His American accent is on point. Um, but he plays a preacher of a, in a small town who becomes possessed by um, a a thing called Genesis. Yeah, uh, is, like this. I think it's is it meant to be the son of God or the son of the devil? It's some, something strange and otherworldly, but it gives him command over people. Yeah, yeah. So he's kind of able to kind of uh, just make people do what he wants just by saying it, and it's uh, yeah it, that that kind of lands some pretty kind of comedy moments as well mm-hmm. but yeah. always dark um because <laughs> it's yeah. it's it's very very a di- say difficult at times um but while at the same time being over the top by every yeah. sense of the phrase um also he is accompanied by um tulip his former girlfriend now returning to try to get back with him um who she's the one who they went with a different casting decision from the look in the comic books um okay. she's tulip, tulip o'hare so irish in the comics um but not in the tv series however played uh, by ruth nager who is spot on and has made the character her own and is really really good um and, and then and it, again oh, she's british isn't she yes yeah so again yeah. we've got well, we've got th- the three main characters are all, <laughs> uh, sorry, all British, which is, yeah, yeah, which is crazy. They've been doing that for a while thing. in America, though, haven't they? Yeah. But, I, but for an American show to be led by three British actors is is a really strange thing, I think. Yeah, that's, well, I mean, uh, of course, as soon as I started to think of like, examples, that uh, went wrong. But um, a lot of the Battlestar Galactica cast were British. Uh, that's true. Uh, the, the, there was one Game of Thrones. Uh, Game of Thrones, yeah, mm. but that's, those shows are a bit more mu- sort of multinational anyway. But the uh, Prison Break, for example, that was one that you know two British uh, leads on that. But the thing with this one as well is it's so um, based in Southern America. It's so kind of hillbilly and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, it starts that... off in this small town called Anvil, um, which is a proper sort of almost I think Texas, um, almost the middle of a desert dust bowl yeah and and the the setting is kind of like it's real it's real kind of old-fashioned um i won't say the word values but um the people have got really old-fashioned attitudes haven't they where it's kind of like you know um wife's kind of at home doing the cooking and stuff and whilst uh you know the husband kind of goes off and works they was and it's that kind of feel to the uh especially the first series Mm. Um, um, and the, I was just going to say as well, the third character, which we should probably mention, yeah. um, played by uh, Joseph Gilgan, uh, yeah. formerly of Misfits, and was he This Is England? Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, he was an amazing character in This Is England. He was like, yeah, he he's the guy that kind of made the show. Really, he's he's such a he's such a funny guy, and you know, he's so cartoon like, and he and he brings all that to the character of Cassidy. Yeah, who's yeah. an Irish vampire? Vampire. Yeah. Um, who say just kind of turns up? Um, and, is, and is, has... is he into O negative blood? 
Oh, oh positive blood, because he's oh, Irish. Oh, oh, t- um, <laughs> but yeah, so he, he um, say, gets into a fight in an aeroplane and ends up crashing into this town. Um, <laughs> yeah. which, which, again, is uh, the thing with not reading the comics. I've had a quick look into some of the differences, and mm. it varies. It's so different from the comics. Um, the, the comic books, they just kind of stumble into each other. It's it's right. you don't get a lot of this, and a lot of the stuff with the first series is not more or less not in the comics. There's bits that are picked and taken, but oh, okay. um, the kind of the summation of the first series happens within moments of the first issue of the comic. Right. Okay. Um, but you've you've got stuff like uh, say Tulip is, is an assassin, or at the very least a, a mob enforcer and criminal, and yeah. Jesse the preacher has a criminal past behind him, which you find out more about. Um, so you've got kind of very earthy quandaries going on on that side. Meanwhile, you have angels who are out to try and get Genesis back off of Jesse, um, and which leads to the introduction of a character called the Saint of Killers, who is a Terminator, but maxed out um, from, from hell. And again leads to a lot of uber violence yeah yeah but um powerful sorry. powerful stuff because it's it, you have genuine fear anytime you see this character um he's he's very much one of the major factors so far in season two and i, I always think about the undertaker from wwe yes. when i see that character but, um, you could just hear a bong before he turns up, really. Yeah. But we should also mention, um, um, his name's escaped me now, but uh, um, uh, the character who's in this series, is he's kind of trapped in hell at the moment. Oh, yes, Eugene. Eugene, Who that's also it. has the colourful um, name in the comics of Arseface. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that's bit, and and his picture's kind of occasionally flashing up on the screen at the moment. But like, yeah, his his character background is that um, he he attempted to commit suicide after thinking that he'd killed a girl, um, but messed it up, and kind of um, that's why his face looks like an anus. Yes, that's why his, his mouth is kind of all sucked in. Um, yeah. Again, I didn't include them in the in the role, but. Um, there's some very, very good comic book covers uh, featuring pictures of him done by uh, the brilliant painter Glenn Fabry, uh, which right. just, yeah, just difficult. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, again, he's a, but he's a fantastic, for, for a character you would think would be throwaway and silly, his hmm. character in, in the series is absolutely, gives you some of the most heart-wrenching moments. Yeah, with, yeah. With, with the difficulty behind it, and you, I say, when in the first series, you're kind of wondering what it is that he'd done to an extent, but yeah. it's it's not too big a spoiler because again, they get into it, and there's more layers to it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but yeah, stuff with him and what happens to him and his story as it's progressing in series two are hmm. very, very clever, very, very well put together. Um, it's it's while there's some pretty sort of so occasionally to almost toilet humor jokes at the same time that it's it's never just descends into stupid comedy if that makes sense yeah yeah okay guys i'm um, gonna have to uh wrap you up there sorry chris have you got one more thing to say bud no no i i guess i was just gonna sort of um i was just gonna elaborate on the differences between this series and the first series but um we've run out of time yeah so i'm afraid we've the only the only already. one thing i'll say okay. um is that the series um was put kind of made for tv by seth rogan yeah that's right yeah, yeah. interesting point about it it would never never have come to, to be a tv series if seth rogan hadn't put in some serious work which is interesting in itself yeah. Hmm. Okay. Well, thanks for that. So that's Preacher. Uh, catch that on your uh, video watching service of choice. It's on Amazon uh, currently. There are okay. other Amazon. There are other video streaming sites. Yeah. There's Although other, there's other it's ways not available watch. on them. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you, yeah. presumably there's a DVD and or whatever no, young uh, well, people. There is one, I think, possibly maybe. Yeah, you, whatever you young people use these days. <laughs> anyway, thanks very much for that, guys. I'm going to move on uh, to... Uh, I'm just going to call it Yalk, because it's easier to say. Uh, Leah was at Yalk, and she'll explain what that was. Uh, and, uh, and hopefully, 
uh, because I'm, I'm looking at the preview and it's not showing me anything. So hopefully when Leah is uh, talking about Yalk, I love saying Yalk now, um, you're going to see uh, some video from Yalk in the background. Take it away, Leah. My mind's still a little bit blown about the fact that Seth Rogen's a producer now. I just thought <laughs> he'd like, appeared <laughs> into the ether. Um, anyway, yeah, I went to YALC slash Yalk which is part of LFCC, which is London Film and Comic Con, um, which is like this big event that happens every year. It's like Friday, Saturday, Sunday in this really big venue in London. And it's basically like a watered down version of a massive Comic Con. And part of it is the YALC bit or YALC, um, <laughs> where basically young people that like to read get to go and hang out with authors and publishers and agents and stuff as part of so that's what I spent a Saturday doing. <laughs> um, yeah, I just wandered around the hall looking at books I couldn't afford um, and listening to authors that are more successful than me talk about writing stuff. And it was fun. And there you go. There's a rundown yeah. of Yelp. <laughs> <laughs> you said you wanted to say something about the cosplayers. Have you got something you're going to say about that? Because I think we've got some Only that I like them. I, oh, okay. I would love to be able to cosplay and I can't because I'm not in that way inclined but there's so many awesome people that cosplay and I'm just like in awe of all these awesome people yeah. they had actually at YALC I ran into um, a really cute teenage couple who would come as Deadpool and Spider-Man and their costumes were amazing and they were just skipping around the hall holding hands and it was like the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I see, I see uh, from a lot of things that are, obviously cosplays have got bigger and bigger over the years and um, certainly the, uh, the, the the level of dedication and, and detail that people go to is yeah. crazy. I saw one, one of my favourite cosplays things that was there was they had a big Rick and Morty meetup where literally everyone who would come as Rick or Morty had this like big meetup and there was just this massive gang of people dressed as Ricks and Mortys and they were all singing Get Swifty together. It was amazing. I think that was in the video. Lovely. <laughs> the, uh, the, the the pictures of them anyway. <laughs> yeah. The yeah the whole the whole cosplay thing though is kind of it's almost become sort of. Um, attractions at Comic Cons and stuff like that. You know, it's kind yeah. of yeah. people are billed at Comic Con. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's all, they're almost stars on their own right now. Even if they're, you know, even when they, even all yeah. they're doing is, I mean, it's like a, it's like a covers band almost, isn't it? It's, it's somebody dressing up and making up as somebody else. To, the to, best to thing is when um, actors turn up dressed as their characters and like no one knows it's them because Andrew Garfield <laughs> used to do that all the time at SDCC, just come as Spider Man. Right. Oh, I that's heard that, um... Who did? Who? Which of the stars of Black Panther did that really well this year? One of one of the women who's in the new Black Panther film um, went wandering around dressed as the Pink Power Ranger. He's the same girl that's in Star Wars, and I can't say her name. Why? That's the one. Yeah. The Will one she appear behind Wars. us or something? Or pronounce her name. Oh, I see. Yeah, right. uh, it's something Lupita. That's the one. That's it. Yeah. I didn't yeah. want to have a stab at it because I'm one of those ignorant white people that can't pronounce other people's names. I didn't. I didn't want to ruin it. I no, I just. I genuinely can't remember her, her Christian name. So. Yeah, that's that's gonna. Uh, I, yeah, I think I know. I think I know what you mean. There. The, the 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 one that plays the. Uh, the little creature with the um, goggles. <laughs> I've got her name as well. <laughs> yeah, so have I. <laughs> <laughs> Preparation, it's a wonderful this, thing. We've this is, done very well. Yeah, well this is why it. we get a group of nerds together because yeah. none of them can remember anything at the time. <laughs> but we, to be fair, we are going off 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 script and talking about something else. So yeah. that's that, you know that, that's that's our um that's our excuse. Lupita Nyong'o. That's yeah, it. That's one. Yeah, that's them. Yeah, well Google done. is a wonderful thing. Yeah, you've got quite <laughs> enough keyboard to get away with that. I would be going. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just, uh, she's also, amazing. She is. She was she really good. Yeah. But yes, uh, check out, uh, look up any videos you can of her. There are videos of her sneakily stealthing around SDCC, mm -hmm. um, dressed as a pink Power Ranger. The other one I was thinking about was um, Brian, what's his face from, uh, oh gosh, Cran yeah, I need to... Cranston. Brian Cranston, Breaking thank you very bad. much. Yeah, he went for a, a, a con uh, with, a, with a, you know, his own, the mask of himself, basically, from the yes. show. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and... Um, Luke Skywalker, not Luke Skywalker, obviously, but um, Mark, Mark Hamill. Hamill. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay with that one. <laughs> I got one, <laughs> I got one. Mark Hamill uh, was going around with a Stormtrooper's outfit on at one of the cons. 
So I would like, totally do of... that. If I was like in a big thing like Star Wars or Harry Potter or something, I would just cosplay as myself. Yeah, I'd why, why not? It's easier, isn't it? Like, Because I'd have the costume. Indeed, yeah. Well, <laughs> what, you keep all the costumes? Steal costumes yeah. and set. Well, <laughs> whenever I go to comic whenever I go to Comic Cons, I always cosplay as myself. <laughs> <laughs> well no, but which one of yourselves though? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Wow, meta. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, I broke Chris. Yeah. Okay. Right. We had, like, um, Christopher Lloyd was there and he was doing like photo ops with a DeLorean. And there was yeah. loads of people that cosplayed as Marty McFly and they did the pose from the poster. Oh, cool. Oh, nice. Hanging out of the DeLorean. And it was like, that was great watching that. Yeah, you've got like an overhead shot of that at the start of the video. Yeah. Okay. I did, yeah. I was trying to get Christopher Lloyd, but I didn't manage it. Right, well, that was quite lighthearted, and now we're going to move on to something else. Um, this is, and I haven't seen this or read the book, but I, I, I know the sort of vague synopsis of it, but you, you guys are going to tell it better than me. Uh, we're moving on now to uh, a sort of dystopian future. Uh, I, I guess we're talking about the TV show, John, is that right? Yeah, 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 yeah okay. I haven't read the TV book. Has Leah read the book? I read the book, so I can discuss the book. Okay, right, right. well, I'll, I'll let John start that off then about the TV show and you guys. So you can let them know it's a dystopian future thing, and it's called A uh, Handmaid's Tale. Take it away, John. Yeah, essentially it's an, and well, I would say it's anti-fundamentalism. I mean, much like 1984 or Animal Farm, I wouldn't say it's anti-religion, really. Um, it's based on uh, Mar Margaret Atwood's book, and um, it's set in New England. Um, that basically, they had a civil war, and there was a huge subjugation of women uh, happening. And uh, basically, the women who are fertile are very in low supply, effectively. And this, the lead character, Offred, in this story, finds herself in a uh, religious cult. Um, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily call it rape, because, in a technical sense, because she signed up for it. Well, she it's did more kind, of, <laughs> didn't she? No, that this is where the book is is better because basically they brought in laws that said any fertile woman had to become a handmaid if they and they like if you uh, weren't married to like certain people in society, then you automatically either became a handmaid or got sent to the colonies to work. So she didn't sign right. up to be a handmaid. She was made to be a handmaid. Okay. So, yeah, I'll take that back then. She was being raped once a month. So she was raped. <laughs> yeah. A lot. Okay. So that's that's one big difference from the book then, isn't it? That, that, well, it does uh, kind of explain that in the TV show as well, but obviously it was more subtle in there. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes. It, it's, it's a really good program, but it's kind of... I was talking to my brother's girlfriend about this earlier and she hasn't watched all of it because it's it's amazing, but it's really difficult to put on if, you know, you normally you put something TV on to have a lighthearted sort of moment, don't you? And this is difficult. It's really difficult, but it's worth it, you know? That's what I got from it. You know, so it just makes you think. Could you, like, could you explain a little bit more suffering. about what you were saying? It's like, so it's a dystopian future, but what's happened? Why is why is so this? So basically, case? the plot of The Handmaid's Tale is that um, because of uh, various different things like nuclear war and climate change and things like that, um, it, it, they've gotten to a point in society where people aren't fertile anymore. Like, no one's giving birth to healthy babies. So there's this kind of civil war type situation that happens where the government is overthrown by a group of religious fanatics who uh, then re-establish America as the Republic of Gilead. And in the Republic of Gilead, there's all these different people in society. So you have commanders, then you have the commander's wives, and then all the other women in society are split into different groups. So if you're um, one of these people in this group, you become an aunt who trains handmaids, or you can become a handmaid, or you uh, become a Jezebel, which is a prostitute, so essentially you get raped either way, um, or you get sent to the colonies to work, and that those are that's what happens to you. So basically they take away all women's rights, and you fit into one of those groups, and then that's your life. So Offred is called Offred because she is of Fred. Fred is her commander. 
Oh, right. Okay. When you say commander, I thought I thought you meant they were like military or something, but that's part of the imagery, yes, so isn't it? The men are all... It is. It's a religious military organization, and they have um, people that go around with guns shooting dissidents. Yeah, it's a fascist state, basically. Yeah, yeah. This is the only thing with this, is I, I haven't seen this series, but it everyone keeps telling me how good it is, and mm. I just, I don't feel... I'm, I'm, maybe I'm just feeling unready <laughs> to. Yeah, yeah. it sounds very harrowing. This. It really does, and I say it's it's things are from a, a feminist perspective difficult enough without seeing. Again, there's enough rape in dystopian yeah. future things on TV without. You know, I'm, I'm I'm so sick of it. It it's almost made me stop watching Game of Thrones. Mm. The, the amount of of hey, let's have a rape uh, going on everywhere. Oh. And yeah, it's this okay. just does it feels really difficult to sign up for this series. Yeah, it's, it is really yeah. difficult to watch, but at the same time, I found that it's really different in the sense of like Game of Thrones, sometimes it's gratuitous, whereas in The Handmaid's Tale, a lot of it is hinted at, you don't actually see the acts happening, so you're yeah. kind of shielded from that in a way. But also, it's of Fred's journey and like how she gains strength from the things around her and the people around her and learning about what's happened to her husband and her child and things like that. And it's like kind of her dealing with this situation and finding hope in it and trying to get out. I mean, I didn't think it would be too gratuitous because Margaret, Margaret Atwood anyway is, is a fantastic, fantastic author, but Don't yeah. I, I, it's, it's, mm. oh, yeah, I think uh, um, like, like Aaron, I think um, I, I just don't think, uh, I could handle something like that. Really, it sounds a bit kind of on, um, and yeah, I think there's enough of it already. So mm. yeah, uh, that's true. It seems that, a bit of a pity see because it seems to be making more of a, you know, less gratuitous as you say, and more of a point about it. That it is that's a, true, a but I, on I... women, the women's rights. Uh, I'm guessing that as, as you sort of alluded to. Um, Sort of George Orwell and stuff. I'm, I'm guessing that the, the idea is that you know that the uh, this future obviously is not good for anybody, by the sounds of it. But um, but particularly no, not I, for don't, women. Don't get me wrong, as well. I really, I, there's part of me that really wants to see it because it sounds like it's a really good perspective. It's going to be empowering because it's 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 someone from this position of being completely disempowered, hopefully finding some strength and finding ways of overcoming the situation. But yeah. at the same time, you're just like, oh, do I have to start in the horrible, horrible bit that's in the horrible, horrible and, and horrible? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm too delicate. <laughs> you're, de I think, you're a delicate um, flower, yeah, everybody knows that. Just just kind of going back to that comparison with Game of Thrones, though, like, um, obviously, I don't know, I, you know, I only know what um, has just been described about the Handmaid's Tale, but I think just with... I just wanted to throw in there that with Game of Thrones, I think it just, uh, they just kind of show a lot about the weakness of men and stuff and their lust and things like that. Um, and I, I, I think that often a lot of the time, it, uh, the, the, yeah, they, they just, they're just portrayed as being weak. That's all I wanted to say. No worries. Okay. Well, well, absolutely. I'd say it's just, I think with Game of Thrones, it was just that the, the go to, how can I make a woman suffer? Was oh, yeah. give him a good rape. Yeah, it, yeah, it is a bit. A but bit I, I d repetitive. Uh, it, it, it is, but I think I think it just that it just kind of it shows how weak men are and how they kind of rely on their their sexual needs all the time. Yeah, but mm, that, that's absolutely. that's that's kind of the that's a bad thing in a lot of ways, though, isn't it? Because that's almost absolving them, and it's you know that's not. You know, it's, no, it's, no, it's but, in the same way. Anyway, where, well, my well, only sorry. issue was in the same way that, like, zombie movies, you get so much where apparently, if if we end up in a dystopian thing where there's no law, apparently everyone's urges to go and have a, have a bit of raping. Yeah, and I, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it, it ignores the fact it's... that for a lot of people, it doesn't matter how much you know that it, whether or not there's laws or not, or availability or not, raping actually isn't something we particularly want to do. Yeah, that well, that's no. the thing. Is yeah, I mean, it's that's the difference between morality and law. You know, just the laws, and, and yeah, mm. there's a lot to be said with that. But we're going to have to move on, I'm afraid. Um, 
Um, and I, I mean, obviously, three of us don't know enough about the actual book or the show to to, to get into it. So, um, yeah. follow that up then, Aaron, with something a bit more lighthearted. Uh, we're going to put you on uh, to um, is, the, is it the fiftieth anniversary? Thirtieth. Thirtieth anniversary. Sorry, I, of I don't know my comics. Head. Obviously, obviously, I don't know my <laughs> comics. So, Aaron, that's why Aaron's doing it. So, I'm going to pass you on to Aaron for um, our next thing, which is the the thirtieth anniversary. Sorry, of a character, uh, Marvel's Death's Head. Well, as I say, um, 30th anniversary, but um, one of the things I was going to say was move, uh, mentioning off from Leah saying about uh, London Film at Comic-Con. Uh, as part of celebrating Death's Head's 30th anniversary, there was a panel at the uh, event with his creators and various people who've worked on him all talking about him. Um, and so I thought it was it was worthwhile having a bit of a, ch- you know, basically giving a bit of a profile on the character because he's quite an unusual one and an unusual as well as being a British Marvel comic character um, with quite a lot of importance and and popularity. Uh, Death's Head is a mechanoid mercenary. Uh, He features having an interchangeable right hand, finishes sentences with the word yes, hates the term bounty hunter, preferring to be referred to as a freelance peacekeeping agent. Um, he was created in 1987 by Simon Th- Furman and Jeff Senior, and his first appearance was in a one-page strip that ran in various Marvel comics um, called High Noon Tex, uh, which was the reason why they ran it in all these different books is because they were a way to use him in the Transformers comic books, uh, because this is back in the 1980s when Marvel did a lot of different comics for a lot of different things. Um, but they realised they were going to create. From. We'll get to that. Don't jump ahead. Uh, <laughs> so we, he was say he. You, they realised that he was a character they quite liked and quite interested in. So made sure they pre-published him so that Hasbro wouldn't get rights to him when they published him in Transformers. Um, his first appearance was he was seen as a this mercenary in the far-flung futures of 2007, um, mm. who then. You took on a bounty to hunt down Galvatron, who'd gone back to 1987. So there was some time traveling. He fought Transformers back in the 80s and in the 2000s uh, before finally being caught in like an explosion that flung him through a time portal. And he then left the Transformers comics and crashed into the TARDIS in Doctor Who magazine number 135 as it was being piloted by Sylvester McCoy. Because the Marvel published Doctor Who back then. <laughs> um, Brilliant. So th- this pictures. is right. Okay. I yeah. That now. You made a connection for me. So uh, th- I mean, at this point, say Transformers, giant, giant robots. Um, so has an argument with the Doctor, who uses what he said was one of the Master's tissue compression eliminators, and makes him human-sized, and then sends him f- uh, forward in time to the year eight one six two which was a little pocket kind of timeline universe that Marvel UK was creating for a few different properties they were, they'd come up with, um, including Dragon's Claws, who were a team of sort of former combat sports team who are hunting down rogue people who he met. Uh, and the other comic that was involved in that timeline was Sleaze Brothers, who were like a comedy dysfunctional detective duo who he didn't meet. Um, so various adventures with that. Um, Chase was eventually hired to hunt down the Doctor again. Uh, and this was in his own series. Um, and because of hunting down the Doctor, went through various times um, and then eventually ended up uh, on the Fantastic Four's roof. Uh, had a disagreement with them, got kicked through to 2020, where he met the Iron Man of 2020, um, Arno Stark who is an established character already. Um, he various, various adventures in his own comic, but then kind of faded away. Uh, eventually, he then, um, when Marvel UK was kind of re-emerging in the 90s and becoming a bigger thing, uh, he they had him killed off by a giant minion cyborg that was tr- gathering intelligences to become the ultimate fighting machine to fight off some future world sort of uh, threatening baddie. Uh, but his personality became the forefront of this cyborg and he became Death's Head 2. 
uh, with a new sidekick and new adventures rocking around the place and kind of became the flagship character of Marvel UK during this kind of really strong time for it. But because of the time travel nature of Death's Head, he still has appeared, even though, say, getting killed off. In fact, even teamed up with Death's Head 2 in 2014 um, in the Marvel UK revival series Revolutionary War. Um, he's continually a popular character. Uh, there's been various fan polls about, like, you know, choose a character to be included in the Hero Clicks series. And Death's Head won that and had a figure. Uh, also in a, a poll to um, choose a character to kind of revive and remodel uh, in Amazing Fantasy. Death's Head did that with the less popular Death's Head 3.0. Back in 2015 at San Diego Comic-Con, there was a board of different Marvel characters shown to retailers as teasers for upcoming relaunches. And it involved various characters like Red Wolf um, and Black Knight, all of which went on to have series. Death's Head was on that board, but as yet has not had his own series brought back again. He has turned up in various comics since, including X-Men 92, Nova, um, and recently Black Bolt issue 3. Um, and there's a new figure of Death's Head 2 due for release, a new con uh, uh, toy. So it still continues to be this character that bubbles in the background and and is popular, never not having his own series, but always turning up when you least expect him. Um, and being someone who ties together these different fandoms is, is an incredibly interesting character. Uh, and I involved... hope he gets a new series too. I'm oh, sorry, I was just going to say, has he been involved in any of the, the films or TV shows or anything? He's not. Um, a lot of people have suggested that with the wacky nature of Guardians of the Galaxy, he'd be a good fit, being you know a, a space freelance peacekeeping agent right. uh robot with quirks and that he could Marvel's he could fit yeah. into that little kind of pocket world um someone suggested that the one of the i think it was a helmet in the collector's room looked a bit like death's head 2's head but there's been no kind of direct line but lots of people kind of go oh yes please <laughs> so it's sort of uh, the boba fett of marvel then is he very much <laughs> A breakout character, as they say. Um, right, but has anybody else got anything to say or ask Aaron about that one? I think Aaron covered everything there. <laughs> yeah, I might have got. I might have a slight obsession. Yeah, I, I've, I've got say, one of your comics. I, I want Aaron. to call you a nerd, but that's kind of what the show's about. So you know. Yeah, yeah. No, I've, I've got, got one, one of your comics, me. Aaron. Ah, what the Doctor Who magazine one? No, the Death's Head one. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Cool. Okay. Cool story, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he has appeared in a few other Doctor Who magazines as a kind of background. There was one where um, there was a, a kind of a, a bar in space, and he's in the background and gets in a fight with Captain Britain, who's also kind of guesting in cameo. Uh, when, um, uh, say, the Seventh Doctor and Ace meet a future version of the Doctor. Who doesn't look like any future of the do version of the Doctor we've ever met? Oh, right. So that's not going to be a canon at any point then. Probably not, no. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, so that's I, I although actually, you know, I... say the the Marvel um, the Doctor Who comics, you know, um, Absalom Dark Dalek Killer did make an, uh, a very blink and you'll miss it appearance in a, a, a Doctor episode. That I was trying to recall it recently. This one where they were kind of breaking into a bank. All right, yeah. and yes. it goes through a security a screen. Um, and the security, yeah, the security screen's got lots of obscure characters, and there's a brief shot of of this character from the that was created specifically for the Doctor Who comics, oh. um, who they had talked about doing spin-off comics with him at one point. But uh, a great one, say Absalom Dark Dalek Killer. That great sounds fun. like it'd be a great metal band. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Chris. Dark, <laughs> Uh, there was a free re sorry, mate. Sorry, you go. There was a free record. <laughs> there was a free record on um, the uh, Doctor Who magazine, uh, his own theme, but it, it turned out to be um, a rip off of uh, Peaches by the Stranglers. I've not heard <laughs> it. 
Oh, but nice. they just rip that off and say that that's sounds like anything you would be hunting down. Absolutely. Being a big fan of I both. heard it on YouTube, but it's not good. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> I was going to say... One but it was that... free. Oh, okay. The, the style of it um, and, and some of the uh, stuff that we've got in the uh, slideshow you gave us, um, some of it is very uh, 2000AD, I thought. Yeah. Oh, because it's British, it's I... got that kind of a... Is that something to do with being British or...? I think so. I think, say, some of the early origins of this, definitely the 80s Marvel, um, say, Dragon's Claws as well, which was also by Jeff Senior, um, uh, they do have that of kind the... of 2000 AD kind of sci fi style to it. Yeah. Wouldn't some of the 2000 AD people have kind of moved over to Marvel at some point, though? Oh, yeah, absolutely. A lot of them have, I'd say, a lot of them have gone to DC as well. Um, you know, it is yeah. somewhere where people do start to work on um and notable people who've worked on death's head um that i mentioned the high noon text uh one-off page that they did to kind of keep ownership the artist on that was brian hitch who went on to do the ultimates comics which is basically the uh, became the blueprint for what marvel cinematic universe ultimates uh, sorry uh, avengers the style of them a lot of that was taken from the Ultimate Universe Ultimates comic, which Brian Hitch did. Um, and he's most recently been doing a Justice League comic uh, for DC. But he's, he's an absolute superstar artist. Okay. Right. Well, um, sorry to cut you off a wee bit there. We are going to have to move on. Um, we have three movies to uh, give out. Well, no, I don't know if we call it a full on review or whatever, but we're going to talk about them. Uh, get your impressions of from the people that saw them, and uh, the uh, th- this is a group of people. They abandoned me. They abandoned Aaron, and they went to the cinema Be without fair, us. <laughs> Aaron lives in Scotland. <laughs> I'm, I'm much more easy to abandon. <laughs> being an I was, I was playing up. Word. I was playing it up for the audience. I was playing it up for the audience. No, so Leah, Le- John, and Chris. <laughs> Hey? It's halfway between Aberdeen and like the West Country. Perhaps we should go to the cinema there and just like all meet. Uh, Everyone come up! Yay! Well, we'll I will say that we, the I think I think we've become regular cinema goers of late because we've discovered a very cheap cinema to go and watch. Yeah, films. that Monday night when I went to John for with one of the, for, for, to see a film. I, I, um, it was um, Alien Covenant. We went to see, wasn't it, John? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, anyway, I, I, I've rambled into this now. Time, time, time. Uh, the first one I've got uh, listed up is War of the Planet of the Apes. So, um, Leah, John, or Chris, whichever one of you wants to start, go for it. Yeah, so this is the, the third in the series of the kind of the rebooted uh, Planet of the Apes movies. Um, and, yeah, it's, so we've kind of... Uh, you know, Caesar is still kind of leading the group of, uh, like, um, the group of apes against the humans. And um, I think, you know, each film has kind of seen a stage of growth in the apes. So, you know, um, obviously the first film was that kind of birth of, you know, uh, the, the apes becoming intelligent. Um, and then the second film was just kind of the next stage of they've dis- they've discovered how to kind of communicate with each other through mainly through signing and stuff like that. Um, but this uh, this film, they're they're kind of they're quite close to this the human stage of their evolution. And uh, yeah, so, and so it's basically just turned into a big fight between humans and apes there there aren't many humans left um uh because they've all they're all kind of starting to catch this virus which um kind of de-evolves them um so they're kind of starting they're not able to communicate verbally anymore um and this is where you kind of meet woody harrelson who's the big bad guy who is um who's kind of like trying to wipe out the um, the apes, uh, so they don't take over the world, basically. Yeah, the difference in this new set of films is that Caesar was used as a cure for Alzheimer's. Um, yeah. It's, it's a bit different in the Charlton Heston films in the book, I'm sure, I can't remember quite. But the the, the basic idea of the apes being a military, military force and um, the orangutans are kind of administrators and lawyers, 
and the chimps are the intellectuals and um that's uh that's still in place isn't it um seem to be from the first two movies well, yeah. particularly the yeah. second the second one sorry not the first one but the, first, the second one the the thing that I, I still find chilling and very strange is seeing a monkey on a horse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was. Uh, I felt very sorry for those horses. I didn't understand. Uh, to be fair, it's the first um, War of the Planet, like the Planet of the Apes movies I've seen. I haven't seen any of them, so the preview bit where they did the previously on was really helpful. Yeah, but I didn't understand the horses. I was just like, how? How does the horse well, carry a fully grown silverback gorilla? I don't, I don't get it. Well, I think obviously um, <laughs> the, ori the, the original horses. Uh, I think in the original films, um, the the apes were more human-like, so it looked it looked um, it looked sort of uh, like they could ride horses. And obviously. Yeah, in this film, it did, they were still very ape-like in their form, so it didn't. It kind of looked weird with an orangutan, uh, a <laughs> massive orangutan riding on the back of a horse. It looks so strange. Yeah, that's and, and interesting and these... because I I got the vibe from from the original films. I got the point of view that I found it chilling because it's a it's a position of power, isn't it? That you see a monkey on a horse. Oh yeah, yeah, like that. on a horse. That's a very, a very um, but long it, standing <laughs> power thing, isn't it? But it just, it just isn't? looked comical because you know these were they, they were kind of um, uh, you know to scale uh, uh, gorillas and orangutans and stuff. And yeah, I noticed, you know, I noticed that with the other with the, the other film. That, yeah, I mean, I've, I've not I've not seen this one. Obviously, I've seen the first two of the the remakes, and um, the. Uh, the second one, yeah, they did seem much more, as you say, more like the real apes rather than the humanoid apes of the of the uh, the original uh, series. I mean, and, I'm a big fan of the original series as well. And obviously, that's what you'd expect them to kind of evolve into eventually in the future. But um, no, they're in these films. They're very much kind of still ape like, mm. and it yeah, it like it just doesn't. It doesn't look believable that a, a fully grown uh, gorilla would be riding. Yeah, horse. I, I, yes, I gathered that from Leah's reaction. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There were so many things about it I just didn't understand, but I enjoyed myself. Right, so. I was quite surprised you'd not seen any of the other. I mean, I've I've got the whole five set thing in my bobber. Um, oh, it's all digital these days. I see you young people and you're digital and things. Um, I'm just going to say quickly, we've got a couple of you're people. You're the one with the digital things, and you're blaming the young people for the digital. Well, <laughs> I still <laughs> like discs though. Blaming millennials yeah yeah everything. that's that's what i'm doing i'm the old man being grumpy i was going to say hello to our audience i've not sp spoken to anybody sorry audience uh, other than uh, uh, the, the beginning the beginning the anjun is there um she says she's got tracked down the original film she's only re only remembers the first one um I, yeah, I love the five all five of them they're, they're, they're not as good as they go they go on they're not as good later you know the first couple are better but then I, th I can't remember which order they're in now so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna attempt that i never thought to write that down i'd advise that you avoid the one with mark Wahlberg in because that was atrocious was Isn't that the 2001 the one? Oh, there's there's three yeah. there's been two reboots yeah there was the one yeah yeah, so, yeah. One, didn't he? oh i have seen the no no i've seen that oh now i'm getting really confused because i forgot there was the, that other set yeah because i'm was talking the tim about the original originals the, like, tim burton reboot um, oh, right, tim yeah, burton. Yeah. Then okay. there's this lot, which oh, this I don't think are linked to the Tim Burton reboot. Okay, anyway, back to our yeah. audience. <laughs> I want to say hello to still. Uh, Sudo Shred says, that's a terrible title card. Thank, thanks very much. Th thanks for that. That's good input. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, and Conseco, hello. He's, okay. He said hello. So, hello, Conseco. Nice to see you guys. Right. Hello. Uh, we're kind of running uh, into the next thing here. So, yeah, so from one war, the War of the Planet of the Apes, to... Uh, Oh, I've seen that. I've been trying to be clever, and I was going to make a little good, a, a little segue there, but I noticed I haven't set up the 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 the, the, the screen thingy. So I'm now going to, to do that while I'm trying to bumble, trying not to bumble, but I am bumbling. Okay, one oh, from one war to another. To World War Two. Thank you. Yeah, that's it. And we're talking about. Oh God, sorry guys, I messed that right up. Talking about Dunkirk. Uh, 
So, uh, what have you start with Dunkirk now, please? <laughs> well, I I think it's one of Richard Attenborough's best films. Richard Attenborough? It's a Christopher Nolan movie. Oh, no, not the 1958 one then. Sorry. Yeah, you know, the, the cool <laughs> one with Harry no. Styles in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The one now, you I, want I, to I, see. I, I'd <laughs> argue that this is probably the finest film of the year so far. I think it's Christopher Nolan's best film. Yeah, it's, is it it's better just... than Emoji? I haven't seen the Emoji movie, but I want to because the Astiff movie is featured in it and everyone knows how much I love Tomska. Uh, um, but Don't anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, are we, we are, we're still on Dunkirk, aren't we? Yeah, Dunkirk. Dunkirk, yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's just um, confused no, me, I, Chris. I, I, this, uh, just everything about this film is amazing. It's kind of um, right from, you know... The, the film itself to the soundtrack um, to the people in it, the cameos and stuff. It's just a, it's just a, a brilliantly intense film. And it's, you know, it's kind of, it's really cleverly put together because it's, it's made, it's put together from the viewpoints of three different kind of groups of people um, on different timelines, which all kind of come together at the end of the film and, um, and yeah, Harry Styles is in it. Um, Killian Murphy's in it. Tom Killian Hardy. Murphy. You know who Killian Murphy is. You know who Killian Murphy is. Yes. Yes, he's in every Christopher Nolan movie. That's true. Uh, Tom Hardy's in it. Tom Hardy's he, in it. Mark he, Rylance is in it. Kenneth Branagh is in it. Michael Caine is in even it. Even Michael Caine managed to get in it without actually being in it. Uh, sorry to interrupt for a second, but some, somebody's I think watching the stream. But they've got the audio on, so can you mute the audio on the stream, please? Whoever's on the show that's actually watching it. Not me. No. There was just a bit of Not an echo me. coming through. It's okay, cool. Carry on, carry on. Right. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah, so it's it's just kind of... Um, and I also, uh, like I have to say, I kind of commend Harry Styles for his role in it because he well, doesn't play a particular... Yeah, he doesn't play, particularly play a, a very pleasant character, and I think it's quite a brave thing for a pop star to do that because, you know, normally a pop star would be the kind of the the glowing hero guy because that would help him sell records. But um, I I, t I think he took quite a brave role in being a bit of an asshole. No. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think Harry Styles did a really good job, actually, especially seeing as it's like a really big movie and it's a kind of a bit of a daunting thing for someone to do if they've never done acting before. So I thought he was really good, actually. And I thought um, Killian Murphy was really good as well. I thought Kenneth yeah. Branagh was good. I thought they were all good. Didn't they? There wasn't a weak performance in that film, to be fair. Uh, somebody no, in the audience and... is asking... Um... He hopes that, um, well, he says he hopes that it shows how brave the French were in defending the beach as well. It's not just the British part. Is it? Does it show all the? It's all British. It is very British to the T and the queuing. It is all, but, all focused on the Brits. But so. I, I thought, in but in defence, in in response to that about the French, there is one French character in it who who's very heroic. I think he did. Yeah, he that's kind true. Of, he doesn't get a good payoff, um, but. Like he sacrifices quite a lot for other characters in the film. So, um, yeah, not the French as a whole, but there is a French character in it that I think is pretty glowing. I'm not saying it's like historically completely accurate. It's very white. There isn't many French people. You don't see the Germans very often. But for what you do see, I think it's a great film. So, is it more and of a I character think... drama then? Not really. No. You don't know anyone's name all right their faces and it just kind of follows these individual groups of people and it is very much about like the evacuation of dunkirk but it is very much the british story you don't see the french and you don't see the germans and it's it is very much just these are the brits they're on the beach we need to get them off yeah and i, I was reading an article actually the other day where apparently christopher nolan was pla originally planned to film the make the movie without a script so oh, it was just it was just going to 
yeah, it was just going to be kind of following these different sets of people. There was, there wasn't, I don't think there was going to be any di dialogue. Um, but yeah, uh, I think his, his wife, who is also his producer, talked him out of it and said that that was a shit idea. So, <laughs> um, so they, 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 he did end up running with a script. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that was made for quite an interesting film actually yeah, to, to I see how that turned out. Yeah, Can but, I just uh, say something yeah. about the um, music moment? It's hands yeah, in. yeah, yeah, definitely. Because um I tweeted you something, I think, Chris, about the uh, the use of the clever use of music is they used a, a thing called a Shepard tone. Oh sorry, it's, I uh, didn't I didn't catch that. Yeah, it's a sound consisting of a super superposition of sine waves separated by octaves. So when played with the bass pitch of the tone moving upward or downward, it is referred to the Shepard scale. And this creates the auditory illusion of a tone that continually ascends or descends in pitch, yet ultimately seems to get no higher or lower. Oh, okay. So it just sounds like you're constantly, it's, it's, it's really clever. If you watch the video, you'll see what I mean. But that's, right, okay. that's how they did it. And they, they, they used to use oh, okay. it in a, yeah, I think Pink Floyd did it as well, and they used it on uh, the Prestige. Did it as well. He used it in that film. Okay, I'll check. I'll check that out. Mm, the Andrew yeah, said, really uh, Andrew in the audience has said there's a sample of that kind of tone on Wikipedia. So, what was it called again, Chris? Uh, John, the Shepherd, the Shepherd scale, was it? John, John, we appear to have lost John. John! Sorry, I missed. My, I muted myself. Shepard tone. <laughs> okay, thank you. The Shepard tone, yeah, and uh, Shepard yeah. tone, yeah. S H E. Let me just tweet it at you, and I'll. Uh... Tone, yeah. I believe uh, Anjun has posted a link for it up on. Yeah, if you look in Twitch. the uh, in the chat at the moment, but um, obviously on on. Uh... YouTube, if you're watching this later, then you won't see that, but we'll, 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 that's why I'm spelling it out. Just uh, go into uh, uh, Wikipedia and type in S-H-E-P-A-R-D, tone. So, shepherd tone, uh, two separate words. But, yeah, I uh, but I definitely recommend that film. If if you like, if you're really into your kind of edge of the seat stuff, definitely go and see that film, because it just kind of, it just goes from one da disaster to another disaster to another disaster, and it's kind of, it's pretty unrelenting, I'd say. Yeah, but... I, I mean, the only thing I would say against it is that um, a couple of family members say they're not interested because they just don't like war movies. <laughs> I think that's the only people that won't like it. You know, yeah, no, the, absolutely. Yeah, because some people don't, you know. Uh, well, I, I'm not. A, I'm not a huge fan of war films. No, you know, I I wasn't sure whether it was worth kind of mentioning about doing it on this show because it's not um, a nerdy type of thing. But like, uh, but uh, yeah, I I liked it enough to kind of go back and watch it again, and and Leah and I both saw it twice. Mm -hmm. So. I, I, thought, yeah. time, I was like, I must watch it again to find Michael Caine. And once I'd see, I'd heard Michael Caine, I was like, okay, I can just enjoy the film now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, where was he? he? He's um, you know, uh, when slight spoilers, but uh, Tom Hardy is uh, in the Air Force and he's like leading a squadron, and Michael Caine is the voice that you hear. That's like, okay, chaps, we've now got some Germans on the wing. He's that guy. Oh wow! Well, yeah, on it's the like radio. Shadow to Tom Hardy in his earpiece. Yeah. Lovely. So that was Dunkirk, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chris. Nice wind up. Okay, and uh, from all that stuff uh, to something a bit more, uh, well, I think it's a bit more lighthearted. I haven't seen it yet. It's really not. It's not? Okay, well, there we go. Hamish is uh, <laughs> wrong again. I was just going by who made this it. Is... That was the thing. Uh, we're now, another movie that the guys have seen uh, is Baby Driver. Yeah, from one of my favourite directors to another of my favourite directors. <laughs> uh, so talk about the film then. <laughs> well, I was waiting for someone else to jump in. You go right. you're, uh, you're, you're, you're like, no, don't be you shy, do. Leah. Come on. Yeah. Okay, I like Edgar Wright and he has a new film out called Baby Driver. It's new, my new favourite film ever. It's great. Um, got some idea what go. it's about, maybe? 
driver um, is a getaway driver whose code name is Baby, and he has tinnitus, so he listens to music all the time to drown out the ringing in his ears, and he's a fabulous getaway driver. So Kevin Spacey employs him for all of his nefarious schemes, uh, but then he meets a girl and decides to run away, and all hell breaks loose. Right. So um, he's trying to get uh, out of yeah, the... The, the, the... The great thing about um, the film is it's it's so centered around its soundtrack as well um it, it, to the point that i think what um uh, edgar wright had actually uh kind of created the soundtrack before he'd made it and made the movie so it's so the movie is kind of based around the soundtrack and i think um the 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 cast of the film were kind of uh, provided with the soundtrack to listen to um, and a lot of the things in the film are based around rhythmical things that happen in the soundtrack which is kind of classic Ed Edgar Wright really when you think about Shaun of the Dead and um, the whole scene with the Paul cues and Don't Stop Me Now by Queen um, and uh, that that was kind of the main highlight for me I think being a bit of a music nerd um, I, I, I just like the fact that it was it was Although it's you know it had its own storyline, but it was all kind of centered around the soundtrack. Really, it is one of those things that is becoming more and more of a, a factor in cinema. Um, if you go to Guardians of the Galaxy as well, yeah, um, this whole so concept yeah, yeah. of the soundtrack being another, almost another character yeah. in the movie, um, and mm. it's, it's I would say, I mean, obviously the Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack blew up. Mm. Um, I think I mean I I, I think it's possibly going to become a trend and hopefully it's one that's not going to come back and bite us in the bum because as i say it's, it's well, i think this music love and and therefore putting the music that's in the film so intrinsically at the heart i don't, I don't think could be a bad thing really but I, th I think it's something edgar wright's kind of uh, quite well known for doing but also um i think it's something that people like danny boyle have been doing for years um you know his films that the, the soundtrack is is a huge part of the movie His well all, all the way and... back to um lust for life in train spotting yeah exactly. yeah absolutely yeah so and and just kind of, and uh, but things like slumdog millionaire um and and probably even uh 28 days later and other mm -hmm. films that i can't think of at the moment but yeah um uh, you know i think it's it, i don't think it's a new thing you know just coming back to Baby Driver a minute, though, um, I am hard of hearing, and the, all, pretty much there are two main characters in Baby Driver who both have hearing problems. So for me, the reason why I loved the film so much was representation, because we finally got a mainstream movie that has people that have hearing problems in it. They featured snazzy subtitles for all the uh, the ASL and like the whole tinnitus thing. It was just really nice to see. Mm like deaf people being treated like normal people on screen yeah was, was there a, sorry was there a representation of a tinnitus for the audience well baby has tinnitus that's his entire reason yeah but it was there like a like a you know an audio representation to, to, to there wasn't like know what it was. when he like takes his headphones out and he almost dies there's like a, a ringing sound and you see him like having his ears looked at and stuff Right. No, just because just, I just wonder if they could exp how they explained it to the audience, in case they didn't know what tennis is. I mean, I do know what tennis is, but I just wondered if there was a, a way. Well, also, you have Kevin Spacey who gives a whole soliloquy about tinnitus right at the beginning. Excellent. Right. Okay. That's that's answered that question. Yeah, I'd, <laughs> I'd say the only confusing part is that Americans call it tinnitus. Yeah. What? That doesn't make that's sense. What what tinnitus? Oh, yeah. yeah, that's that's how they pronounce it. It's tinnitus. That doesn't make sense that way. The tinnitus. tinnitus that aluminum is right. giving me tinnitus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I was looking at whilst you guys were talking. I um, I love that film, by the way. Um, I was looking at his next project is uh, Grasshopper Jungle, which is uh, a life two young high school boys who fight for their lives during an apocalypse. That's Edgar Wright's next film, Grasshopper Jungle. Young adult novel. I've heard of it. Haven't read it. Hmm. Sounds cool. Yeah. Cool. cool Basically, story. Baby awesome. Driver is great. Kevin Spacey is great. Jamie Foxx is great. Anzo El Gore was a joy to watch. The soundtrack is fabulous. Go see Baby Driver. Well, there you go. It that's is, that's it, a glowing recommendation. Film. 
So of all the three films, you, you how would you how you want to rate them? Then are you, are you saying they're all good and all worth seeing, or is it if you can only see one of these three films? Right. Well, hi, here we go. Here's a better question. If you could only go and see one of these three films, which one would you recommend? Asking you first, Leah. Uh, as a film nerd, I would say Dunkirk because of my Christopher Nolan love. But as a general film that you would go watch and leave having enjoyed, I think Baby Driver. Okay, and John, what about you? What, out of the three films, if you could only pick one, even though Leah picked two, uh, which one would you pick? <laughs> well, I didn't. I picked Baby Driver. Okay, okay. I, I I would say I enjoyed Dunkirk the most, but I enjoyed the usher um, who sold us ice creams at Baby Driver. He who was, was very entertaining. He was at the second viewing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, bless that chap. I love him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's really on, on that bizarre note, I'll ask Chris the same question. So, what if Chris, if you could just pick one of those three to sort of recommend, which which which, which would it be? Can Can I do it in like best to not so best? <laughs> go for it. Go for it. So I I'd, I'd probably go um, Dunkirk, Baby Driver, uh, War for the Planet of the Apes. So Baby Driver is the best one. Uh, sorry, no. Dunkirk being the best, uh, War for the Planet of the Apes not being uh, being the not so best, although they were all good. Okay, okay. <laughs> I think we got somewhere. Hey, somebody, somebody in the before we move on to the next subject, uh, which is where we all get to ramble uh, at length until the end of the show, so it becomes a bit more uh, chaotic than it already is. Um, anyway, somebody's asking Trump, Trumpy there. Hello, mate. Um, he's asking who are all the voices. Oh, I was just going to say, uh, well, I'm Hamish the Polar Bear. You know me from other shows. Uh, you know me from such shows as Hamish's show. Uh, we've got uh, John there. Hello, John. Say, John. Say hello to Trump. All right. So I was eating a Jaffa cake. That's all right. <laughs> Chris. Well, that was Leah laughing. Uh, Chris is there. Hello, Chris. Hi, Trump88. <laughs> and then we've got Aaron, who's there as well. Hi, Aaron. Hello. And uh, I think all of us are going to be chatting in this, this last section, so uh, we'll see how that goes. Oh, God. Um, we're doing okay today, um, for, because I actually extended the show. I don't know if everybody... Apparently not everybody reads my notes and things, but they just turn up and do it, so it's okay. But um, I did add 15 minutes to the show notes, today. Do you? Yeah, yeah, apparently. <laughs> Uh, Where'd you post those two? Uh, I don't know, just put them on a forum or something. We won't be constrained by your rules, man. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Trump's That's waving back at you guys. Down. Okay, moving on to our final thing. This is our, uh, we're probably doing this for another few weeks. Well, this is uh, the big show of the moment, and uh, I've got lots to say about this. I've been quite reasonably quiet most of the show, but I've got loads and loads of notes about this. I want to chat about this big time. So from now until the end of the show, uh, which is quite a while yet, so we're doing all right. Um, we're talking about the new series of Game of Thrones. So, spoiler alert uh, to everybody who's watching live at the moment, or if you're watching on YouTube, it doesn't matter when you're watching. If you're watching, uh, we're going to have expected you to have seen Game of Thrones uh, up to episode three of series seven, because we're going to be talking about episode two and three particularly. Um, is there a new series of Game of Thrones? Anyway... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so spoiler warning spoiler warning spoiler warning uh, if you don't is there a TV version of Game of Thrones if you don't want to get involved <laughs> in chatting about the show and discussing it because uh, this is not a review or anything like that, it's just, this is just the chat bit at the end of the, the end of our show um, like we did with Doctor Who and stuff we're just going to di- discuss it so if you if you don't want to know anything about Game of Thrones uh, well yeah leave us now I'm afraid and, uh, but, but do come back at um, if you're watching live, come back at 22.15 UK t- 22.14 UK time, rather. No, no, I've, oh God, I can't even read my own schedule. See, you guys, you got me mad. Moving on. Yeah, 21.09 for the uh, for the wrap-up and, and the cool music at the end. Get on with it. But moving but, on to... Get on with it, you all interrupted me. <laughs> moving on to Game of Thrones. It blatantly though. won't be done by 21.09. <laughs> yeah, obviously not now, no. Okay, so starting with... I mean, I've kind of... Lot, I've written a lot of notes. Um, basically about well, a few you're, things. You're the only one who hasn't taken the lead on a subject, so... That's why I was going means. to do it, yeah. I was feeling like... I, I feel like, yeah, I'll, I'll do something here. So... Oh. What I'll do is I'll run through all my notes uh, and sort of say what I've got and, and see what you guys think about stuff as well. See, you know, get your, your review and things. So the first thing I've got... Now, I noticed in the first episode of the season, 
is it series? Oh God, ah, they've infected me with that thing. The first episode of the series. Um, I, th- I think we should develop a rule where if we're talking about an American show, it's fine to call it a season. If we're talking about a British, if yeah, talking but... about a British show, it's fine to call it a series. No, I'm, they're I'm calling never Doctor... saying season. I no, and that. also they're calling the Doctor Who the new Doctor Who. They call it the seasons. Uh, mm. I'm, I'm not getting into that, right? Okay, that that's an aside. We're, we're obviously not getting. <laughs> yeah, time. What about it? <laughs> Moving on then. Okay, so uh, episode one, we kind of uh, we went over when we did our, our uh, talked about that last time. Um, sorry. So okay, quick uh, quick update from the audience. Trump eighty eight says the cheek. I'm guessing he means the chick. Uh, yes, very good. The chick from Game of Thrones is hot. That's all I know about it. Um, there's a cast of like hundreds of people, mate. So yeah, there are a lot of attractive women. Marjorie there. Tyrell was my personal favorite. She grew she on me. Mar- oh, Marjorie! I loved Marjorie. She's dead hey. now. Uh, blonde, he said, which which again doesn't really limit. But I think who you oh, mean is tar- Daenerys Targaryen. I think it's mean. I yeah. think he means Daenerys Targaryen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, she she's pretty fit, like her too. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay. I never I never thought it'd be a situation <laughs> where I'd be sitting there going, "Marjorie's so hot." Look at Marjorie. <laughs> Mar- it's Mar- not a name that you. Know. Oh, look at Marjorie. She's so hot. Hello, oh, Mar- lovely Marjorie. I'm so glad I yeah, let you all so take, let me take the lead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to move on. I'm going to get a subject in here. I'm going to get it. Go on. Marge right. Simpson is quite hot when she's Ep- had a shower. That's true. Got a hair day. Episode, uh, the first episode, there was no nudity at all, as far as I remember. <gasps> no. I which I thought was quite a good, <laughs> quite a nice, refreshing change. I mean, I know that the sort of the old, you know, the old joke that people were sort of saying was, oh, it's tits and dragons, so you'll like it, was what people were telling me, you know, and it's like, you know, okay. And it kind of is, but there's also a lot of dicks uh, and a lot of bombs. Uh, I have to point out there's, 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 a, lot of, there's a lot of nudity. Um, there's something for everyone. The sub- well, pray naked. Yeah, well, I'm going to get to that's what I'm going to get to. That's the next, that's the first thing I was going to talk about. That's why I'm talking about this. So, in episode two, they have a scene with Missandei and Grey Worm. Uh, right, get- that's the thing, was it? Okay. Sorry, they're all like merging into one episode. I don't know which one's which anymore. That's uh, okay. I, I watched them all again today to remind myself. Um, so, Missandei and Grey Worm are kind of. Um, you know, have a have a big dramatic bit, and then it goes all lovey dovey, uh, and mm. for some reason she just decides to strip off in front of him, and then she starts stripping him, and he sort of tries to stop I mean, her. When... For some reason, it was because he was going off to war. Right. Okay. Fair, going... <laughs> fair point. What? He's going yeah, off to war, I'm... and he has physical issues about nudity and physical love. What with being a eunuch and all. Yeah. So this is what I was going to say. Yeah, that it, the, it, the, it the was thing is, going to build up to that. I think. <laughs> uh, God, and um, so Missandei Grey Worm, and and then it ends with basically a sort of love scene, and we're, we're you know, but I think I, there was nothing wrong with it. It was a good scene because they're, they're both good uh, characters, good actors, and I like it. I, I do enjoy that, um, and I enjoy the fact that they're trying to talk about love, and 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 they, they did obviously he doesn't have equipment down below. So that was quite an interesting thing, but I, th- I thought they were still a bit gratuitous about it. I thought that, especially the way the end of the scene was like, "This is how he's pleasuring her. This is what he's doing." You know, it was all very. Mm. You were offended by a woman receiving p- pleasure. Say that again, sorry. Are you offended by a woman receiving pleasure on the screen? God no, happened? not at all. I'm <laughs> talking about. I'm talking about how how they had they had no nudity at all in one episode, and then they sort of. I was going to say they shoved it in your face. Um, <laughs> No, no, I'm not. I'm not offended by that. I, j- I just thought it was a bit. Um, it was. Uh, it's kind of like, in case you can't work it out, this is what he's going to do. You know, it was just. It just it seemed a bit strange to me. It's just nice to see a girl having fun for once. Because oh yeah, I mean, d- d- don't get me like wrong. I, I'm, 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 I'm a big fan of that. I, I, I love to partake of that. But that's, that's not the point of what I was saying. But yeah, I suppose um, in, in the trying to even out, as we talked about earlier, mm. the yeah. women not enjoying themselves. Um, the yeah, say some a uh, little bit of redressing the balance, no bad thing. Okay, maybe so. Maybe from that point of view, that was why they put it. But it just felt like a bit like they were saying. The audience is stupid. They can't work out what he might be doing. No, I, I, get what you that. I get that's, what you say. That's that's kind of all. So, but, but maybe yeah. But as you say, now that I think about it, yeah, I, you you make a good point that um, redressing the balance of, of of consensual and enjoyment uh, for for a woman. Yeah. 
Okay. Also, but, she's, but, she's... not even just as a woman. As, there's is quite a pure and kind of innocent love between the two of them, and they've they've taken their time putting their their kind of background story together, where they've grown slowly. You know. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely other. a proper relationship. It's, it's not just something that, that, yeah. that they can do with like a lot of the relationships in this. In the, in You've got a lot actual. of kind of sexual politic going on. Yeah, and yeah. it's nice to have this kind of pure little innocent couple um, in the great swarming. You know, huh. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I'm just being a hard-hearted old bugger. Then you know, maybe that's <laughs> what it is. Um, so that so that was that. But that, that but again, the, the two of them are really good. He's got an amazing bum. I have to say that. Gosh, a bit of thing is, I bet if you know you're going to do a nude scene in a in a, sh- in a film or a TV show, you're like down the gym like a mad person for the the, the time before it. So, uh, although he does strike me as he might be quite fit anyway, in in the traditional sense. Um, he's British and so is she. Um, I saw them at the mm. Comic Con thing. It's like. I thought I really thought he was was not. He had a really good accent. I think his accent's pretty good. But um, he's from Bristol, don't you know? He's from Bristol. Yeah, she's from London somewhere, isn't she? She is. He ha- he also is a pop star when he's not on Game. I've of heard Wars. that, but I've not. I've, I'm, I'm, it's probably it's probably young people's music. So moving on before we get uh, sidetracked again. <laughs> Sorry, that's my fault as much as anybody's. Um, one thing that I thought was worth noting uh, in episode. Two, did it do? yeah, episode two it happened. And let me sorry, bear with me just a second. Yes, it was. Um, yeah, there was there was a strange uh, use of a, 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 it's probably got a name, and I'm just going to describe it badly, and nobody's going to know what I'm talking about. But there's a thing they do in cinema and television and stuff where they edit something so that the end of one thing visually merges into the the next. Uh, yeah, and, and there was a couple of bits of it. Wipe, one of them it? was sorry. What screen? It's well, it's like a wipe. Uh, no, no, no! I'm not talking about the no. technical thing. I'm talking about. Well, I'll tell. I'll explain it more. When I explain what I mean. There was. This when it becomes the pie, right? The, yeah, that was the middle one. I was going to get to that. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's the one. That's the one. Ah! I that's the one I immediately thought of. Tell me the one before yeah. that. No, the one before that is actually. I was just going to say with Miss Andy and Grey Worm, she's like grabbing like the bedpost or whatever it is, and then the next scene. It's Samuel grabbing a book from a shelf, and that sort oh. of merges in. Oh, and then, yeah, as you yeah. say, the the big one, the one that makes you go, <laughs> is um, when Samuel is treating uh, Jorah Jor- Mormont. For- see, I'm remembering the names this week as well, without even half the notes in front of me. Um, and uh, when he's treating the grayscale and he's cutting the stuff off, and then, it, yeah, the next cut, the next thing, the next scene cuts to somebody sort of cutting into a pie so they're cutting the crust of the pie while he was cutting the crust of the uh, the guy's uh, skin reflection so yeah I thought that was quite interesting that they did that about oh. three times oh, yeah, did sure. you say were, uh, what was the third one then? I can't remember now because I've not written <gasps> it down in fact I hadn't written the first one down but I remembered it because I've got them right next to each other <laughs> uh, very quickly uh, because I'm Take it all over. Uh, Tits and Dragons sounds awesome yeah okay if you, if you like both of those things um Oh god, I, I was going to start my another thing. But I'm not going to go there. Um, Cersei performance is amazing. Everything. Yep, she's great. Uh, women at strips are no reason. Sounds like my kind of woman. Okay, Trump. Okay. Uh, so far, everyone had the reason to be naked. Yeah, that's true. Everybody's like, everybody's at it. Um, it's certainly not just one sided. Uh, and I like that ninja or not death by poison is still a thing. I don't quite get that. I like that ninja or not. No, I don't get that. Sorry, you've lost me there a wee bit. Is that not a re- uh, reference to Elena Tywin? Well, yeah, that's yeah. way, way, way in the future of this chat, if I ever get there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go. We'll get to that, we'll get to that, okay. So I thought that edit was worth mentioning. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm choking to death now. The next thing I wanted to mention, because um, this is sort of uh, chronological, really, is... And again, me being a hard-hearted old bugger, I, I, I'm, I wonder how you guys feel about this. I, I, I'll, Arya basically realised that she had a choice once she realised that King's Landing, eh, not King's Landing, once she realised that Winterfell was back in... Oh, excuse me a second, I'm, I'm talking here. Somebody talk for a minute. <coughs> once she realised that Winterfell was back in Stark hands uh, while being, say, at that the aforementioned High House. Uh, yeah. Oh. Somebody's sounds going there. And finally, 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 meeting up with one of her relatives. Sorry, mate, there's a crackling noise coming right over everything. Hello, can you hear me? And never quite managing to get there. 
which has been interesting. <laughs> I can know, hear you, Hamish. Right, hey, I'm guessing that Aaron has done something so he can't hear us. What Hamish was trying to say. Aaron. Aaron. Hamish is still alive. No, he's not. No, Aaron is not. Hello, Aaron. Aaron! I think he's knocked oh, his headphones out. Nice to see the guy who made the pies again. Oh God! <laughs> uh, Aaron, <laughs> see, live folks, t- 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 there's no hiding that it's live, is there? Aaron, I can you hear us? Aaron, have we I'm lost Aaron now? <laughs> no, I think he thinks Aaron? I'm still going. Aaron, can you hear us? Yeah, I think he pulled his headphones out or something. That's what the crackling is. Yeah. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh, yep. There we go. I wonder okay. if he's still reading the chat. I'm. I'm currently kind of just being. Aaron, are I you think, there? I think I'm still here. Right. Okay, mate. You've been chatting. <laughs> you've been chatting hey, away, fine. but we've chatting. we've heard you, but you've not heard us. I think okay, you pulled your headphones fine. out. Possibly. Because we've been, we've been hearing weird, whoa, we're hearing it again, really loud, wild crackling noises. So ah, okay. careful of your yes. connection. Apologies for that. That's all I'm right. Back. We were just, uh, and then you were rambling away and we're like, no, no, we're here, man, we're here. Okay. I'm, I'm here. I've stopped talking. Um, you're chatting about pie. Yeah, pie. talking about pie. Mm, pie. Mm, pie. Okay, so mm, Aria pie. had the choice, basically, as, as Aaron was uh, covering from there uh, at the start, of going. She was, her plan was to go to King's Landing and, and kill Cersei. Um, I don't think she'll be the one to do it. That's that's just my opinion. Um, I think, yeah, I think Jamie. Mm. I'd love it. Jamie killed her. Oh, that'd be interesting. Well, oh, that might that. come up towards the end. Uh, the other thing I was going to say: uh, whoever's crackling, can you please, please stop it? It's really loud. <laughs> Somebody's like flicking a switch or pulling a Probably cable me. in and out. I'll stop doing it. Yeah. Okay, mate, cheers. Like as long as you can hear us and we can hear you, that's what matters. Okay. Cool. It's uh, not me, because I'm muted. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I was John. flicking a mute switch, so that's probably me. Moving on. So Arya's choice basically was between going, going to King's Landing, which was her plan, or finding out that, that you know her home is her home again, or at least to some extent. Obviously, we can't bring back some of her family. but um, And I thought it was like a, a sort of... I think the two ways I put it is it was it was love versus hate, you know, which was more powerful. And I would say that her love for her family overpowered her hatred of Cersei. Does that, mm. does that seem like something? I mean, I, I'm a bit, yeah, because I'm a grumpy old bugger, but that kind of seemed like what it was to me. It, yeah, it's kind of um, choosing vengeance for the dead over the family that are still alive. Yeah, the, yeah, the, oh, yeah, yeah. So choosing between the two, yeah. So <clears> it, it's nice that Again, it's it's choosing life over death. Okay, right. Sorry, I'm going to have to move on a bit because I've got loads of notes and I've, I've obviously between the two of us we've made a lot of, <laughs> a lot of uh, time go there. Um, interesting. Oh, God, I've written the wrong name. It's just as well that I'm uh, smart this week and I know what I'm talking about. I've written Rob down when I meant uh, John. Gosh. <laughs> um, he's been dead for a while. Uh, so John uh, and Littlefinger and Sansa, that is really, really Ooh. interesting. I thought that John's protection uh, of, you know, his, his attempts to protect Sansa from Littlefinger are, are, are interesting because, and obviously at the same time, Littlefinger is trying to manipulate Sansa um, and, and con- you know, continue to school her in politics, I suppose. Littlefinger um, the GTFO. He is the creepiest mother effer ever. He just needs to go. I hate but it. His, but his voice is fantastic. I, I have no, I have no idea no, no. how he does that with his voice. How he, he speaks, well, and yet it's all a noise coming from from right back in his throat. There's like a simultaneous noise while talking. Must be an Irish his, trick. His, his, his voice, voice in that fused me. Um, for right from the beginning, he 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 kind of started off with this with a kind of a nondescript accent, and it's gradually evolved into like a, a cross between Irish and Cornish. Yeah, it's more like, like his I, own I, accent, though. Yeah, yeah. You can yeah, definitely yeah, hear the Where's he supposed to be from? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> okay, but that's right. the thing. It's uh, it's, I, it's, it's Almost like his accent is as difficult to pin down as he, he is. is. Yeah, very bad. Yeah. Yeah, clever. Yeah. That's, that's, what's it called? That retro. 
Retconning or something. Retconning, that's it, yeah. Okay, so uh, anyway, I was kind of slightly yeeing at John, uh, you know, to t- tell him Littlefinger to stay away from Sansa. I know I'm not going to get into it. I'm not meaning that, oh, she needs protecting because she's a woman. That's not what I mean. I just meant that, you know, stand up for his sister was cool. I like mm. that. So before anybody beats me up about that. Um, Arya and the Dire Wolves was an oddly melodramatic scene, I thought. I, I didn't get that. Well, I got it, but I didn't... I thought I was meant to get more, I think was kind of what I looked at. Yeah. It. it was kind of... Un- it was unnecessary. She'd made the decision when she chose to go home already, you know? I, I don't think there was any need to sort of hammer that home with a, a weird scene. And, you know, it wasn't actually the wolf or whatever. Blah. Anyway. But that was the point. It was a callback to an, a scene in Series 1. Oh, I understand. Okay. Yeah, I understand that part. I right? didn't get that. What 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 scene was it a callback to? So, um, mm. There's this scene between Sean Bean and Sean Bean, <laughs> Ned Stark, and Arya, <laughs> where he's like, like, oh, you're going to be a great lady and a great wife. And she goes, no, that's not me. And so then when she meets up with Nymeria and it's like, come with me. And then it's like, oh, no, that's not you. Uh... That's what you would do. It just seemed oddly, as I say, it seemed oddly melodramatic for something to do with Arya. But I think it's kind of like foreshadowing, like Arya will go home and then she'll realise that's not her and then she'll continue with her quest to murder people. Yeah, but I think it'll be nice to see them all together. So we'll get, we'll get, we'll, okay. Um, next, this is a big one, uh, Ilaria and Tyene. Now, if we're talking about people that are, that are like, a, that, you know, that are hot in the series, I, I, both her, <laughs> both the mother and the daughter, this is not sounding right to start with. Are, are very nice. I, um, obviously, uh, Indira Varma is well known to British audiences because she was in a couple episodes of Torchwood. They kept killing her, in fact. They keep killing Susie. Um, but she's played Alaria for, for a while as a sort of, you know, recurring character. Um, she was obviously the one who killed. Uh, Ah, no, I forgot the name of the daughter. Marcella. That she Marcella, Marcella, thank you. Uh, she killed Marcella um, for no real reason other than just spite, it seems. so. Well, I thought it was to get back at them for killing Oberon. Well, yeah, yes, uh, yeah, I suppose, yeah, but that was a weird revenge to t- when she could have went for Jamie. Mm-hmm. Or Tyrion, seeing Oberon died protecting Tyrion. Mm, yeah. So, mm. so, 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 but, uh, anyway. what, what what's going to hurt Cersei more? Yeah. 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 I suppose. Well, that's what I mean. So she made it personal. Yeah. I think is the point, and, and mm. obviously comes back to better. But Tyene was the the one I liked the best out of all the uh, the Sand Snakes. I liked her the best. But mm. hey, hey Um. So yeah. So the, the the thing with them. Hang on. I'm just going to check my notes and see if I've not missed a point here. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I'll come back to I'll come back to Ilaria, eh, Ilaria and Tyene in a second, because uh, I've got little arrows going all over the place and I've mixed myself up. Going on to Theon and Yara. It is Yara, his sister's name, isn't it? Yeah. Great choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got, I've got them right. Because I did, I didn't write these notes with any sort of things in front of me. I actually remember the names at the time. Um, I don't understand what happened to Theon. I think that's a really weird character. Theon has PTSD and so when he sees a man yelling at him with a sword in his hand, he immediately goes back to being Reek and runs away. Right. Is it yeah, some, he's very like broken. Yeah. He's well, very, I mean, very broken. Yeah, I mean, I understand. I mean, I, I, as someone who suffers from PTSD, and, and I, I understand that, but I just, I don't know. It just... You just keep willing him to to, you know, find his moment and find his steel. And Actually, find, just, yeah, and, and you know, it just it's occurred to me please. it just occurred to me that John was standing up for his sister just five minutes before in that same episode and now maybe that was what was in my head. It was kind of like, you know, I had that, yeah. yay, he's helping me sit and then it's like, oh, because she's, I mean, she's tried so hard with him. She tried to rescue him. I, I just his... think it makes for, it makes for a kind of a really good story as well that, you know, because as an audi- as a member of the audience, you're kind of sat there willing him go, come on, Theon. Yeah, but the thing is, this you know, is the yeah, thing. Yeah, but then you go, you can... oh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, it really rips it away from you. Yeah. Well, can, sorry, Conseco, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Aria scene was like a nostalgia trip for both of them. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's kind of what Leo was saying, I think. Uh, uh, it's a uh, callback, yeah. Um, right, okay, but this is what I don't get about the whole Theon. There's two things I want to say about the Theon thing. One of them is specifically in that scene. Uh, although Leah's answered one of the questions because she's way cleverer than I am. Um, he, he fights them all to start with. He's fighting loads of people to start with. I, the thing is, though, if you have like 
a mental illness or some sort of like trauma. It's triggered by something a lot of the time. And so for him, fighting wasn't a trigger. He did that before. It was the show to him from the uncle. Yeah, it was the way in which Euron was speaking, the way in which Euron's presence was, must have yeah. reminded him of Ramsay so much that it triggered. Okay, you're right. Yeah, I, I can see that. Right, you've answered that then. That's, that's something, yeah. Okay, that's I mean, how I, I, I it anyway. No, that's cool. That's cool, yeah. Um, oh, God, I'm into all little squiggly writing now. What was the other thing? Oh, yeah, and the other thing about Theon that I was wondering, but this is kind of a more um, <sighs> general I know, thing. About just. The- just- so, sorry, something just sprang to mind as well with Theon was that, um, you know, in a lot of those situations, he had to protect um, Sansa as well. And I think that was just kind of um, brought back to him, like yeah, he was in a similar yeah. situation where he had to try and protect his sister. And yeah, it, it was just quite late like... that he did it, though, didn't he? I mean, he could have protected her earlier, especially once... He... Once he, uh, okay, well, no, I, I, yeah, I mean, we're going to go back too far in this, this show to get into all that, but yeah, I know what you're saying, yeah, yeah. But the one thing I was, this is, this is, uh, I've written down here, nature versus nurture, and I think it's very strange that if you, if you look at how John was treated by Catelyn, um, obviously Ned was, you know, it was his son, and he treated him like one of the, one of the, the, the family, um, just the same as the rest, but Theon was pretty much treated better than John. And, you know, they went through all the same stuff. So him and Rob and John were all, you know, around about the same age. They were all the older brothers, if you mm. like, or stepbrother and half-brother and what have you. So it's just, it's a, it's a strange thing that not much of the starkness seemed to rub off on Theon. But I think yeah. a lot of that, though, was think... won in battle, wasn't he? It wasn't his choice to go live with the Starks. That's true, so... but he was quite young when he went there. And, and the way we see them at the start of the show... In series one, is is he's part of that family, you know? Yeah, I guess when it came to it, when he was sent to the Iron Islands to try and bring back the Greyjoys, maybe it was just the influence of his dad and him wanting to be a Greyjoy and live up to his family name that made him kind of go against Rob. I don't know, but that yeah. that's just how I thought of it. Yeah, it was, it was a strange thing, but I, I just thought that you know, it's, it's, I'm not saying it's bad or inconsistent. It's not bad at all. It's all it all works for me, but it's just made me think of like the sort of nature versus nurture thing. Like, you know, it's, it's like he's, it's almost like he's you know, being flicked to switch in him sometimes. You know, which yeah, I mean, as you say, mental health that can be like that sometimes. Okay, I think I think John's just kind of made very different stuff though, isn't he? He's uh. You know, he's, he's yeah. That, that's not, what I mean. Yeah, that that's it. It's, it's not so much his upbringing as the the fact that he is just you know who he is. Um, yeah. Right. And also, yeah, Theon was kind of, was already kind of weaselly before he was broken. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was starting to get a bit that way. I suppose we were seeing that. Oh, okay. Well, the one thing I was going to say talking about Yara. Uh, oh, we're running right out of time, but I'm I'm going to. Is everybody Go else okay? It. Everybody else okay yeah, for a little while good. longer? <laughs> oh, yeah. what the hell let's keep going um, so Yara I thought Yara was dead because I thought that was her hanging from the bow of the ship when he was in the water mm. yeah, but obviously in the next episode sand we find that she's been captured sorry Leah that was one of the sand snakes uh, ah was it? right that's what it was okay. the other two thoughts were killed on the ship I know that, yeah, but I, I just thought it was Yara. For, I just assumed it was Yara because he failed to save her anyway, but she's not there so we see the sand snakes go yeah. Yes. Well, I was, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm going to come to that one. actually. I'm going to come to some of that. As they're sort of anti-heroes almost, aren't they? Mm. Um, now, here's the big qu- Saturday morning kitchen yesterday um, uh, promoting Game of Thrones. So I don't think she's dead yet. Who? We need Bronn to come in and save her. Sorry, who who, who was on yes. Saturday morning kitchen yesterday? What is? I, no, don't tell me what it is. I don't care. <laughs> Just <laughs> who was on it? The 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 the, the, com- the, the comedian and actress that plays Yara. Yeah. Ah, right, okay, okay. No, no, she's not dead. That's, oh, have you not seen ep- uh, the third episode, Chris? Yeah, yeah, no, I was just kind of, I was just confirming that she's not dead because she was promoting the show on Saturday Morning Kitchen yesterday. Okay, <laughs> thank you. However, however she, is, she is pregnant in real life, so I don't know if she'll be leaving this series. Okay. To be fair, Lena Headey was pregnant for the whole of, like, the one yeah. where Cersei paraded through the streets naked so mm. that's true so you know yeah there's there's ways to film around these things well, wonder woman was pregnant as well in that film yeah, and the whole of wonder woman yeah julian well, anderson did x-files while pregnant and stood behind couches 
Uh, Tell me what women can do. Can I, can I just throw in then that uh, right Beverly now, Crusher was show. pregnant and she wore that great big long. Okay. Uh, is anybody else <laughs> want to talk about pregnancy? Or? No, I'm quite happy to talk about Game of Thrones. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah. Can, I, can I just say that um, I think that <laughs> that last episode, um, everyone seemed really happy because they were all drinking wine and kissing. Mm, we'll get to that. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yep, yep. the question I wanted to do, this is the last thing about the end of, the end of episode two, is how did Euron know where to find Ilaria and Yara? Uh, and, that's the and thing, is that everyone that, seems to be a step ahead. Well, that's, and yeah, that oh, yeah. yeah so, this is do, we have, do we have a mole? Well, this is what I was going to say. Is there a spy? And, yeah, Varys is obviously one of the first ones you'd think of. Or... Uh, were, were they betrayed by somebody else, you know, on their own side? Because obviously the, the, the Ironborn are, are probably very mixed in their feelings about all this. Mm. Because they've, you know, I, they're, they're, who, they're, who they're loyal to and stuff. I think the mountain is passing ma- messages backwards and forwards. <laughs> <laughs> what Morse code tapping out and he's, he's all <laughs> okay. He just blinking his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> blink, blink. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, speaking of Varys, um, Varys is seen with the uh, with the Miss uh, blah, 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 blah. Let's uh, try that again. Melisandre. Eh? Melisandre. Or Melisandre. Or yeah. Uh, Varys yeah, is seen red... with the Red Lady. Um, was was quite interesting. It was very short. Short. When I watched it back again, I, I seem to remember it being longer and more detailed. But I think it's just because they were both so good at the acting, but that it conveyed a lot without actually having to say or do much. Because they got the, you know, they got those three things, and it's the first time I think we've ever seen Varys uh, sort of rattled. I think is that right? Does anybody else remember ever seeing Varys upset or rattled? I say, apart from him trying to defend himself to Daenerys in episode one, um, but yeah, but it, wasn't, it didn't even confidence. seem that rattled about that. <laughs> he was yeah. obviously talking, you know, because he was in his comfort zone. He was talking his way out of it, but it seemed like she'd made him think about something. Well, the whole thing where it's like, I, I will die in this strange land, as will you. As will yeah, and so you and I, I'm, I'm supposed yeah. to die in this strange land, and so are you, yeah. So it's quite, ooh. Because at first I thought, is it a veiled threat she's making? And that's what he seemed to take it. And then, obviously, then she sort of, it's almost a prophecy after that. that you know, she seems to, to go. Mm. It's very, uh, yeah, that's interesting. But I thought it was, I mean, he's really good. Conleth Hill is just such a, so good and so dedicated, obviously. Because he shaves his head every series for it. Um <laughs> Varys he's is one looking of very tanned, though, I noticed. Well, he has just come back from being abroad, you know. He's getting out <laughs> in the open a bit more. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> right, well, moving on to... Well, we're recently, well, we're already into the third episode. Now, now again, I understand this. This is the, this is the point. I'm, I'm, people are going to sort of mansplain or women-splain this to me again, but... Um, I understand the sort of mechanics of this, but I just don't know if I like it. And that's Cersei's revenge thing. It, it, it's a bit too convenient that she gets to get um, Ilaria and has her, her favourite daughter as well. And I don't know, it's just... Well, it, he's it, a, was it, it was all a bit of a neat ball. under instructions. But at the same time, he, he had gone saying... I will get you something you want. And I was like, immediately, oh, okay, well, it'll be her. But obviously, I'd, I thought they were probably, I had thought they were killing the favourite daughter last time. But <clears throat> Maybe I just but, no. didn't connect it enough in advance and that's why I felt it was a bit tidy, you know? It was just a bit too convenient that Cersei got her ex- revenge exactly on that, you know, these people. Um, but, that's, but that's what Euron had set out to do, though, wasn't it? Like, yeah, that's, yeah that, I think that's, yeah, that's what I've not got. So, yeah, maybe I did need you to explain to me then. <laughs> <laughs> I don't um, understand how the lipstick works. Um, it's poison on it. And, yeah, I know, but like, and then she when takes an antidote. Yourself, no, she, she, take, she, took, she takes the antidote. She, she took the antidote. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, that happens in all the scenes where they use it. The people take the antidote. I was watching it and being like, but I don't. <laughs> poison the wearer yeah that's why she had the little drink afterwards right okay <laughs> that was the antidote okay i just saw Cersei wine yeah i just fancy a drink yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i've just glass. killed someone could do all the shots mm. yeah okay now so... for a nice tickle yeah. so Cersei, um 
Oh gosh, I've, there's a lot I want to say about this, and I've kind of um, wait a minute. Yeah, I've I've kind of missed it all the the notes on this, but I, I know what I want to say. So it doesn't matter. Um, there's a lot of little bits and pieces, but this the, the main thing about that is is yeah. I mean, it seems a bit tidy, but now that you say it, now that you put your on into the equation, ah, right, that's kind of made it click for me. So yeah, I was mm-hmm. just being a bit thick there. Euron, are we are we finding your on less charming now? I never I found him charming. Joy. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I quite like Euron. Like, I think he's a dick. <laughs> he's a dick. <laughs> he's, he's, I've met I've met that man in life, real life, so many times. Yeah, and like, just, the thing uh, is, he's so fun to watch. Though it was like Ramsey. I hated him, but I loved watching him on screen. And it's like with yeah, Euron, yeah. I hate, him, but I love watching him because he's so interesting to watch. Yeah, yeah I suppose you. Also, right, I very yeah. much enjoyed him riding through the street, going, "What a twat!" That was like my yeah. favorite line. Of the show. It was so funny. Yeah, there was the. Um, they, they, they clearly kind of looked at his character though, from um, from the uh, the last series to this one, and just kind of completely revamped him though, which I, which I I found kind of really strange because I I find I find it like a, a quite um, an extreme jump from Euron season six, series six, sorry, um, to Euron series seven. Yeah, I know what you mean, but once once you get into series seven and start watching it, though, he, that's who he is now. So yeah, um, maybe he on... had like a bit of an existential crisis after he stole like the Iron Islands and was like, "I need to wear leather now." And impress. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will. I will say one thing about. I, I admire his facial hair. I, I do like a man with interesting facial hair. I, that that just sounded wrong, but I know what, what, what I meant. What I want to know. What I want to know is all the shots of the Iron Islands. There's no trees or shrubbery anywhere, yet they still manage to fashion massive, great big ships. What? Uh, yeah, where did they go to get the had. ships? If they they run out port, of yeah. trees because they used all their trees to make massive ships. <laughs> 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 okay, we're retconning again, aren't we? Okay, but uh, anyway, this but this, the whole session. I mean, that scene was long and quite harsh. Uh, but the thing is, I think the thing I have to remember. Um, you start to feel a bit sorry for well, maybe not Ilaria, but for, certainly for um, for Tyene herself. I felt a bit sorry, but then of course you remember she's a murderer as well. Mm. You know she was she was a killer. Pardon? Who isn't? On yeah, Game of sure. yeah. So yeah. you kind of, but she does. But then that was one of her things, wasn't it? Sort of seeming almost a bit childlike, and you know, because she was the baby of the of the of the group anyway, not of the family. But she was the baby of that group, and and she did you sort of use her, you know, her youth, if you like, as a sort of a shield at times and stuff. Yeah. So mm, anyway, so that that would be it's interesting. Just, just, I mean, the the thing so far is just how everything's as well. Everything's you what, start sorry? off. You cut off uh, the mate. Everything is unraveling. You've got the whole series, you know. So we uh, basically got, you know, the the it started off with Daenerys in such a power position, and now everything's being chipped away bit by bit, and everything's just unraveling. Ah, uh-huh. well, this brings me kind of onto something else. Oh no, no, <laughs> yeah, I've got a weird thing in between here. Uh, evil turns Cersei on. I've written down <laughs> um, because she comes away from that, you know, torturous, torturing, and murder scene. And mm-hmm. she basically. Like, wow! I must go sleep with my twin brother. Yeah, I must must go shag uh, Jamie big time. Um, and she's like really, really, really like, whoa, really powerful, you know. And that's obviously her big turn on is horrible things uh, to it's other people. Power. Yeah, power. Well, I suppose it's power. Yeah. Uh, on that note, talking about Cersei, um, uh, John did actually mention something about. This. He, he he showed me a video or, or put a video somewhere, and I saw a bit of it. We're talking about different styles in the show, but I noticed yeah, that, the clothes, yeah, yeah, the clothes, yeah, the uh, sorry, yeah, the clothing stuff. And I noticed that the um, when the servant comes in the morning after to Jamie and Cersei's room, uh, she's got a very new Cersei style outfit on, you know, like Cersei's since she took the throne outfit. Nobody else noticed that. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm paying too much attention mm. to the clothes. No, yeah, yeah. I saw, I saw some <laughs> interesting things. About again with like um, studies into Marjorie's dress. Throughout. Yeah, that's the thing, John. Cr- and then Cr- yeah, and then you get onto Cersei now, is is in some ways aping some of the Marjorie, uh, some of the things you could see through Marjorie's dress while she was the mm. you know the queen. Mm. Also, Sansa's starting to wear her hair like Cersei used to. 
Mm. Oh, so because she, is. Because mm. she believes that no one likes knows Cersei better than she does. She mm. studied her. Yeah, well, well, we'll get to that. We'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, I've got one. In, there's an in betweeny bit for that, and that's Lady Olena. Uh, uh, I think we'd all agree Diana Rigg is wonderful. Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay. We're, we're all agreeing on that. Um, and sorry, my writing gets really small here. Uh, yeah. So she, she's now. Yeah. What she did with her, so basically, with her last, you know, her last jab at them was to was to attempt to hurt. Uh, Cersei a bit more, well, not to hurt her anymore, but to, to, to at least Just change something by giving her new information, and that's by revealing that she was the one that killed uh, Joffrey. Joffrey. Um, and I think I think that's going to affect Jamie more than it will affect Cersei. It'll affect Jamie because, again, it's the Tyrion. Yep, exactly. Thing. That's exactly it. Because, because he'll realise that Tyrion isn't guilty of that. Yeah, and Jamie's always been fond of Tyrion. But he's obviously gone along with this. So it's going to put Cersei and Jamie at loggerheads because Cersei won't give a shit. Mm. But yeah, still Jamie dead. will. Yeah. 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 So I think Jamie will end up killing her. Mm, that's an interesting thought. But I mean, that whole scene was pretty good as well because it's Lady Lena's. Um, I felt a bit bad for Jamie. Again, though, everybody in the show is a murdering bastard, nasty person. But I still felt a bit <laughs> bad for Jamie hearing that bit about, you know, the day Joffrey. Um, but I think, yeah, I mean, she does say he like, was a bit of a cunt, wasn't he? It's like <laughs> something like that. It's like whoa. Lady Elena is just great. She was just like, mm. oh, I'm gonna drink this poison, but before I go, mic drop. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, 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 right, so. yeah. So it was interesting stuff, and she certainly, I don't know. Yeah, she so she certainly made another, you know, one last, uh, as you say, a mic drop, one last good big moment. So no, again, the, the twist with um, the Iron Islanders. Destroying all the boats of uh, of the Unsullied, and and you know that yes, you've got Casterly Rock, but it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, and, and as Jamie oh, said, him. it probably means more to him than it does to Cersei. Mm. Yeah, because he's sentimental. Yeah, well, yeah, well, he's still a bit human, where she's pretty much a monster. Well, because well, he said it's got I'm sentimental plus... value to him, and uh, but that is the thing; he is sentimental. And plus, I think that, you know, there's still that kind of, uh, that um, we haven't seen it for a while, but there was still a little bit of a spark between him and Brienne as well. So mm. um, he's, I think, you know, he can afford to kill Cersei. <laughs> <laughs> he's got someone else waiting in the wings. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. that's one way of looking at it, I suppose. Um, yeah, um, so... <sighs> Oh yeah, yeah. I had written some down, but I've, I've scratched it because I watched it. Because uh, I watched, because I watched it all again. I had written down that she said something about a fortnight to the bank to the uh, the, the uh, Mark rural, Gatiss. To Mark Gatiss, yeah. The Bank of Bravos, Bravos. That's it. To the, the Bank of Iron Bank of Bravos. So, and she said something like you know about a fortnight, and I thought, what she thinks she's going to win the war in a fortnight. But as I noticed when I watched I it a second. Sorry? Because she'd have all the Tyrell gold by the yeah, time. Yeah, that's uh, watching it the second time, I realised that's what she was talking about. Because she, she, then I saw them like, again, maybe maybe I'm the audience member that they're um, doing all this obvious stuff for. Because <laughs> there, like there was like one of the soldiers was like ticking off uh, some sort of sheet or something and counting gold literally in front of the uh, in front of the, se- in the, in the side yeah. of the scene. It'll be interesting to find from, a, from an American perspective. Yeah, because they don't. Have I'm a under word the impression that word "fortnight" means nothing. There. Yeah. yeah. They don't have a word for it. They Bloody don't fortnight. have a word for two weeks. They just say in two weeks. Yeah. Fortnight yeah. is a, is really? a, a British thing. Mm. Um. So yeah, that could be. <laughs> you'll have it in when. <laughs> fortnight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Stewie fortnight. says that in uh, in Family Guy a few times. Okay. Right. Okay. They don't have the the phrase "I'm afraid" either, do they? They say like, if you say to an American, "I'm afraid that's not possible," you say. I know you're afraid. I know you're scared right now. <laughs> Which and is really they say tonight. And all toilets are bathrooms, even if they don't have baths in them. Yeah. And they don't have egg cups. Apparently wow. not. Okay. And they pronounce is, tinnitus. Right, guys. tinnitus. Please let me finish. Tinnitus. <laughs> tinnitus. Tinnitus. Okay. Okay. So, there's two tinnitus. things I was going to say at the end. Um, ah, yeah, yeah. Tinnitus. All right, Chris, okay. <laughs> uh... <laughs> The um, 
Yeah, I think Aaron sort of got onto this already. And is it should we be worried that Tyrion appears to be, um, I don't know if I want to call it out, out smarter, but yeah, out smarter by Cersei or being thought. You know, she sort of seems to be thinking ahead, or maybe it was Jamie. I don't know. I don't know. Who do you think came up with the plan to go to Highgarden? Well, I mm. think we both know that Tyrion has more of a connection to Casterly Rock because he never felt like accepted by the Lannisters. So for him, conquering his family home would be a great achievement, which mm. is why so you think that was a weakness Rock is a bad then. idea. I think they knew that's where he'd want to go first. Right, right. Mm. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Especially because he was like, I know a secret way in. So to him... Yeah, but that's the thing, I suppose. It's Would Cersei have known Tyrion well enough to, to know that? Or would Jaime have? Yeah, oh, we, we yeah. Keep seeing, we keep seeing Jaime as a good guy. And maybe he's, he's not. He's so not. Well, obviously not, but yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. So I, I I don't know if we're sort of, I'm sort of worried that you know there's a couple of moments where they seem to be ahead of them like all of a sudden again whereas before that um, you know uh, the others were, were were ahead of them um, mm. yeah okay we'll come back we we'll, we'll sort of covered that anyway um, one last thing I wanted to say before we uh, wrap up was am I the only person who actually likes Samuel Tarley? <laughs> oh, I love Samuel Tarley. Yeah, oh. he's he's a likable guy. Oh, okay. It just seems like a lot of people um, on Tinterwebs webs and stuff seem to be, um, you know, don't like him or whatever. That that was an interesting thing in was it Ep Two when when um, Jamie was talking to mm. Lord Tarly. Yeah. And I was I was literally sitting yeah. there for a bit going, Tarly, I know that name. Yeah, that's and then they cut yeah. to Sam, and I went, Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, think, yeah, uh, quick I audience interaction thing. before I before I finish and wrap up. Um, yeah, uh, going back to the Red Lady, Conseco said, "Yeah, she knows about the White Walkers. Uh, she knows more about that." And that, yeah, that's a thing. That's an important point about her. So I think she's going to come up a bit more as well. Um, but the last thing, just just in re- relation to what we we're talking about there, he says maybe Terry expected. Um, well, I'm not quite sure he's, how he's worded it. To hit the moral popula- morale population more than a strategic position. But I think, yeah, I think, yeah, no, sorry, I see what you're saying. To, yeah. to hit them right in the fields. Yeah, hit them in the fields, as it were, rather than anything strategic. But then it's it's sort of backfired and it's been his weakness to, to, to have that view of the place. Mm. You know, I think mm. I think the thing about Jamie is he's kind of in between the two all the time. Yeah. You know, and I think that's that's it's the sort of um, you know turn to the dark side, stay in the light side, or whatever type uh, thing of the of the, of the uh, family. There, I think so. he'll prevail in the end. Well, you think he's going to kill he'll his, get sister. his lovely Brienne? No, well, after, but, becoming, what about the after big, becoming the Queen Slayer as well. What about as the, the big? Uh, yeah, that's true. What, what about the big, um, big hairy guy? The the the. Normand. Um... Yeah. With his he's... big beard. Yeah, he's 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 he's, Ooh, he's obviously got a beard. You know. Okay. Well, she does not fancy him though. She fancies Jamie. Yeah. She does. But is that a healthy thing? I don't know. Okay, right. We've yes. we've, we've rabbited on. We've we've gone way 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 over. So I'm going to Which start. Which is no one like myself. us. Yes, exactly. I should never have added more time. I just gave us more uh, time to waste. Um. <laughs> You Thank should never you. have earlier on said, oh, we're actually doing quite well for time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what could possibly Wrap go wrong? Up. Yep. <laughs> and uh, so thanks, everybody who's listening uh, live uh, right now. I'm, I'm waving. I don't know why I'm waving. Or not. I'm not on a camera. Uh, thanks, everybody who's listening. And uh, thanks uh, also if you're watching it later on YouTube. Thank you very much. Please leave a comment and, and subscribe and all that other stuff that people say on YouTube. Um, just... Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Two things. I I forgot. I've got a new thing at the end. Where is it? Oh, I've not got it. <laughs> yes, I have. I've got it. I've got it. I've done it. Don't worry. I've managed to remember everything on the actual slideshow things today. Um, what is he talking about? Uh, right. Yeah. But if anybody was paying attention to the notes and discussion today, uh, I did ask everybody if they wanted to put forward anything that they wanted to promote or uh, you know let people know about like the you know your 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 YouTube channel or your uh, your your Twitch or whatever whatever you've got, I was just seeing if any big guys wanted it, I've only got two, I've got mine and I've got Aaron's, um, I'm not saying everybody has to but just in, c- in case you wanted to, that's it but, so we'll do it next time if you want it 
I'm going to finish up saying thank you to everybody first of all. So, thank you very much to uh, Leah. Thank you, Leah. Thanks. And do you want to, do you want to promote anything? Do you want to pimp anything? No, I'm all right. You're okay. Fine. Okay. Uh, John, uh, thank you very much, uh, John, for taking part. Cheers. <laughs> Chris, thank you very much. Thank you, and check me and Re- my good buddy Reese out tomorrow night on somervalleyfm.co.uk for the Proctologist's radio show at 9am till 11pm. 9am till 11pm? 9pm till 11pm. <laughs> all day. Oh, God. Practicing fair, Prog, that all day. To be fair, with Prog, 9am till 10pm. That, yeah, that maybe could, not. That could yeah. be like five songs. Yeah, that's yeah. Nice. A couple of songs. Aaron, uh, as if as if we need to remember you're there. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much, also Aaron, for all your input as well, buddy. No, no, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. And uh, Aaron has a lot of stuff, but we've both. I'm just going to put it up over over the end titles. You you can see it. I say titles. It's it's just a static screen. I've not made an animated title that I have of the first one. I will eventually. So thank you very much again, everybody. Thank you all for watching. Uh, and uh, we'll be back in two weeks' time, hopefully with a more together show uh, never <laughs> thanks very much everybody bye, bye. bye.